Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Nintendo Select Podcast. This is episode nine of your weekly Nintendo podcast. Uh, oh, yeah. I am your host, Botox Games. Of course, joined as always by the backlog bantering Tucker Hazel. Three weeks in a row. Thank you. I'm making Thank it you. stick. I'm making it stick. We are recording very early on Thursday. So you're morning. implying that I've only been here for three weeks. I'm like, that's not true. I've been here every week. <laughs> you you only you only exist for the past three weeks. We were recording bright and early, Tucker, because yes. yesterday and we last the beauty of this is last week when we recorded, we didn't even know this would be happening. We had an idea, True. but there was a Nintendo Direct yesterday. So this is going to be a beefy episode of the Nintendo Select podcast. But before we get into that, of course, some housekeeping. Uh, we have a Discord. Join that down below. We're starting to get a lot yeah. of people in there. Um, yeah. It's it's really nice. Nice little community that really cares about yeah. Nintendo you news. You've been plugging and... in some of your other videos as well. With yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, hey, the podcast doesn't do that bad on YouTube. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's, just, Specifically it's the... noticeably less than your other videos. So if you really want to remote, you got to find sure. other avenues. I do wonder, like, with the YouTube algorithm, is it hurting my other videos? It might be. I have no goddamn clue. It could be. I'm sabotaging my own channel for this podcast. Good. Um, Good. But, yeah, join the Discord. Get in there. Talk to I'm us going in down there. The ship. Um, been... I especially have been more active in there. Of course, yeah. we're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, so check out us on there. Uh, Tucker, how are you doing? How have you been this week? I don't think we really talked that much. We talked a little bit about the direct yesterday, but yeah, you're back home. I yeah, I am. I'm, I'm back. I'm back where I belong. Uh, I brought my friend Detective Pikachu with me. Oh. Uh, you know, there's just a bunch of cool stuff behind me. It, feel, it feels good to be in a place that's not like boilingly hot constantly, because it was in Texas. Um, but this, this last week has been crazy for me, man. I mean, uh, spending a lot of time with friends in Austin before I left, and then, you know, seeing my family, getting here, spending time with my girlfriend, a flight, actually a very easy flight, the easiest flight I've ever done in my life. I arrived at the small terminal in Austin, it's it called the South Terminal, basically no one there, it took me three minutes to get through, security, sat down, started playing a game on my Switch that I'll get to later, hopped on the plane, we landed two hours later, I got off, I went straight into my girlfriend's car. Easiest flight ever, no complications, took very little time. Kind of kind of interesting, actually. Because I'm so used to, like, oh, God, got to prepare for, like, 90 minutes in the fucking line while I'm, like, sitting there. And and then, oh, it's going to get delayed two or three times because that happens every stupid time. But now, this time, no. No, it was just it was just good. It was smooth, are, you, smooth are you the type of person that gets there, like, three hours early? No, no. I got okay. an, hour, an hour before boarding is usually my strategy. Oh, interesting. Wow. Well, because I take the... If I ever need to go somewhere, I go. I take the bus to uh, Seattle, and that's like a two-hour bus. So, like, because of that, I don't trust that. I don't trust buses. So I only get there at like three or four hours early, and I just sit Let's there. See, what the hell? It's rough. It's rough. But I, I, the the I am I get so paranoid and so like anxiety. Sure. Yeah. Driven. Because I I remember the first time I flew. I think I was like 13 or 14. I was going to Orlando to go to Universal with my sister or something. We were so late. We literally had to run across the airport. There was like a terminal. We had to like mm. um, get on like a shuttle car thing. And it, yeah. yeah, I think I have PTSD from that. So yeah, I always I get there PTSD. way too early, which yeah. I need I need to fix. But um, I'm glad you had a, a smooth flight experience. Yeah. Uh, pretty run of the mill week for me. A lot of obviously, as we'll get into, a lot of videos leading up to the direct. So I was, I was busy making yeah. a lot of videos and I played a lot of stuff this week when we get to what we're playing good, but good. otherwise good a pretty pretty quiet week for me but um yeah i guess tucker we should go ahead and get into our quick headline so we're going to cover sure. all the stuff that is not direct related first and this won't yeah. take too long because um there wasn't a ton of stuff but there, there was some interesting stuff starting off uh announced i believe thursday night or friday um tucker once again just keeping you down down and out <laughs> Taking these L's about the Nintendo Switch Online Nintendo service. Nintendo just wants to keep the man down. Yeah. So, uh, Fire Emblem, uh, the the original game on, on Game Boy Advance, is being added to Switch Online. Yeah, the original in America, yeah, right? Yeah. Is being added to Switch Online. It'll be live Friday, uh, June 22nd. So, you'll that'll be available. Today. Yeah, that should be available Not, now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when you're watching this, it's already available. Uh, this yeah. is great. I'm excited to play this. I don't know if I'll be able to put too much time into it because there's yeah. so much else out right now. But oh, um, I, I'm excited about this. Japan is also getting Binding Blade, which would have been been nice oh. if they would have just, like, hmm. translated that for us. But I guess that's too much to ask. But uh, That is yeah, a lot are, of work. Are you, are you interested in checking this out, Tucker? Um, I don't know. I mean, this this and... Uh, Christ, what's the Blade of Light, dra Holy Dragon, the Blade of Light, whatever they the other the one they first localized. One. Yeah, <laughs> the actual first one. Um, yeah. those are the only not modern Fire Emblem games that I have any access to. Modern. Um, of course, 
Oh, not modern, mean? modern. Sorry, yeah, said not not modern. modern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I'm those are the only sure ones most. Pe- those are the only ones most people have access to because Nintendo. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so they would be the only time that I <clears throat> would feel good diving into a not modern Fire Emblem, but I also feel like I might not enjoy not modern Fire Emblem. So I'm certainly willing to give them a try at some point, but. It's it's so far down my priority list. Like if I want to get into Fire Emblem, I'm gonna go play Echoes or actually give Engage another try. Like I've there's so many of those games for me to play that I know will appeal to me more than the older ones, just by the differences in design philosophy um, that that I'm aware of. So, but this is a great thing. I'm so glad it's on there. Uh, it's it's interesting that there are still are series like this that didn't have any representation on Nintendo Switch Online, um, even though they could have in different ways. Uh, and so yeah, you know, great 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 pull for NSO, and uh, just very strange, you know, it's come by itself. That's it. Huh. Yeah, it's very alone. Thanks, NSO. Yeah, but um, I one thing about Fire Emblem, I, I haven't played this game. Very interested in it. Oh, it's time for me to wake up. Oh, talk is waking up. Yep. But uh, yeah, one thing I'm excited about with with Fire Emblem <laughs> is specifically Rewind Tucker. I think yes, obviously oh, modern mind, Fire actually. Emblem. Never modern mind. Fire Emblem <laughs> has it built in anyway. Yeah. But yeah. just rewinding, I, people be like, "Oh, you're so cheating." Just, you know what? I don't care. care. I yeah, don't care. Don't give a fuck at all. Modern Fire Emblem has it in there, especially. I don't think the older Fire Emblems even had like a, a casual mode, did they? So um, no, uh-uh. it's all permadeath. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna be rewinding if I play it, and that that should make it a lot easier. Probably a much quicker game also to get through. Yeah, so I'm definitely interested in checking it HLB, out. HLTB like... HLTB says about 27 hours. Um, yeah. I wonder how much that would be cut down by not having to like replay play sections and stuff. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Probably still pretty long game, all things considered. Probably that's longer than I expected to be honest. That's that's yeah. still like the length of a modern fire. In fact, that might yeah. be longer than some of them. <laughs> that was that's more time than I, I think I put like 35 hours into engage which mm-hmm. you'd expect it to be much longer. But anyway, yeah, available now on Switch Online. Very exciting. Uh, keeping that weekly or bi-weekly NSO release schedule going. Yeah. Next up, this was announced right before the direct aired or the day before. Botan Kaidos 1 and 2 HD Remaster is releasing officially on September 14th. Uh, some new features, which I'm very excited about. Uh, there's easy modes where you can like one-hit kill an enimi. I probably won't try oh. that. But there's also a 300 times speed mode. Kind of like uh, Square Enix did with yeah. all the Final Fantasy ports. So Botan yeah, Kaidos yeah. coming out right in the middle of September. I wish it was coming out in August, as we'll get to, because there's nothing in August that I'm interested in. And as mm. you get to later September, there's a lot. But mm. yeah. I'm excited about this. Yeah. Of course, Monolith Soft developed game published by Bandai Namco. Uh, game yeah. ports. So. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, fast forward feature that you're right, uh, is available in almost all of the ports, uh, modern ports of Final Fantasy games. And when I played Final Fantasy VII, on uh, the, the actual Final Fantasy VII, not remake, on my Switch, I it had that feature. And it is so ridiculously nice i mean because so much of those old games were based around it just taking a lot of time for you to wander around get some random encounters grind up the XP. you can also turn off random encounters which is fantastic oh in in botan kaidos yeah oh cool okay so yeah these modern affordances are peculiar because in in some ways they go completely against like the meat of the game's design philosophy but i think people realize now that that kind of time sink isn't necessarily fun it's just tedious and of course there is an appeal to it i'll I'll never pretend that people who are into older jrpgs don't probably they probably do enjoy it to a certain extent um just feeling cozy and sort of natural to like like sink into that that rhythm um but what'll be really interesting to see is if we ever get a modern jrpg designed kind of like the older ones but with that fast forward because i can't i can't i can't pin down what the newest released game that has that sort of fast forward function. It's it's usually for sort of SNES, PS One era. Um, yeah, Octopath RPGs. doesn't have it, does it? Um, I no, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. so. Um, but we well, probably won't because they already do sort of account for not having as much padding in that same way. Um, but that's a great thing for those games. It certainly makes them way more accessible. Yeah, definitely. And that's, I mean. I love JRPGs, however, it is hard for me to find time to play them, especially because I like to play so many games, so yeah, if this yeah. helps me get through at least one of them before uh, some of the October announcements in that direct, mm. I'll be very happy, because yeah. those, those games do look, I love the art style. Uh, no English or dub, which is weird. The games had dub on, in, in, on GameCube, but they got rid of it for this release. I guess, I guess it's like notoriously bad or something, but here's mm. the thing. I want to hear the notoriously bad dub. Mm-hmm. A little disappointing there, but... Um, Botan Kaidos 2, September 14th. Mark it on your calendar. 
this was potentially promising for anyone who actually cares about this, although I've never seen a single person talk about this game. <clears throat> Crash Team at Rumble support page uh, had something referencing the Nintendo Switch. I cannot believe this game is not coming to Switch to begin with. Yeah. This, I mean, it's a Crash Bizarre. game, bro. I, yeah. I know people associate Crash with PlayStation, but... Every modern Crash game has come to Switch. Crash yeah. 4, Crash Insane Trilogy, and Later. Crash Team Racing. Late ports. True, true. But... This will probably it'll probably be ported, but also this is a, one of those games you can just smell on the wind. This is gonna die within a year, so will they yeah. bother? Who the hell knows? Pro they probably will because this the Switch seems like a place that more people into this kind of stuff would be playing that regardless. Yeah, it's Who weird knows, that it's not man. there already. The, the fact that this game even exists is weird. I it comes out. I think it's already out. Actually, I think it came out like two days ago. Um, yeah, that's I've right. heard no fanfare for it, and it's a crash yeah. game, which is a bad sign. I don't know why Activision must insist on doing things like this. Just make Crash Five or whatever, Spyro yeah. Four. Give us something new, but or something, something new that we want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this was weird, Tucker. Chocobo GP. Of course, this is yeah. the the Chocobo themed racing game from Square Enix. Sorry. I played the free to play version last year. It was actually really good. Like the game, the game oh, itself, okay. the core gameplay is like it's one of the better kart racers that's not mario kart sure. that i played sure. but it was free to play it was it was uh, you know full of microtransactions really you know mischievous stuff yeah. going on in that yeah. game they released stealthily a, a full version of the game that has everything unlocked um or maybe not unlocked, but all earnable through game play. yes yeah that's um, what i heard for, for 60 dollars. so very cool to see this um i believe they already you know kind of wound down support for this they're not adding more stuff to mm -hmm. it but i would like to see this more uh, with yeah. These games that have microtransactions, these games that are kind of dead, because now there is a version of this game that if the servers ever go offline, you're not you don't have to worry about the shop and game or whatever. It's just sure. there and yeah, yeah. I might check this It'll out. It'd be actually. really interesting to see if Square specifically does this and if they continue to do more of them. If other companies follow suit, I don't think there is too much of a monetary incentive, frankly, for these companies to do this. I no. mean, so many. A live service multiplayer focused games with lots of micro microtransactions die relatively quickly but they burned bright in terms of having a lot of people play them at first and making that worth the development costs and all of that um so square doing this is crazy because they already do so many games that redoing a game that no one gave a shit about is insane but they have uh, they have a lot of games that could fall into this sort of area so imagine god forbid babylon's fall next year you know Babylon's Fall, uh, gig, uh, offline version. <laughs> did you play Babylon's Fall? Talk no, I didn't. Uh, I my beat friend one hundred percent did it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and you did too. Yeah, I didn't one hundred percent it, but I that game it gives me vibe. Well, I'm not sure what I was gonna say it gives me vibes of. It's not that bad. It's like sure. a six out of ten. It's it's sure. actually sure. fine. I don't know why they made it a live service game. I played with yeah. co-op with my friend Caleb, but uh, Babylon's Fall, bring it back, run it back, give me ba <laughs> Babylon's Fall too. God. Uh, this one's just for, uh, well, actually, this one, okay, this one's weird. We talked about, uh, the Wonderful 101 Remastered getting its DLC a few weeks ago. They released it yeah. in two waves. You can now buy that on its own for $10. $10 dollars is not that much. It's not that much, but also I don't know who it's for, because the Wonderful 101, not an expensive game, and it's a free inclusion. Yeah. With Wonderful 101. So I really don't know. Imagine, like, who's going on the eShop and just going to buy the Wonderful 101 standalone dlc dude i don't know man this is crazy i think it's very interesting actually i mean i i haven't even looked up what the gameplay for this is like or how different it's it is 2D. but oh oh that's right oh i think we mentioned that i'm sorry it's not even it's, it's barely 7 a.m now my mind is I, and also you know what no i'm not apologizing i'm sorry i didn't remember the wonderful 101 the wonderful after one school DLC hero gameplay i apologize so holy shit i'm i'm the fucking worst ghost in the world um yeah this is just weird what the hell you yeah. doing platinum but okay it, yeah it, it does make me wonder because this is one of the only things platinum has published themselves maybe maybe they need some money you know maybe they need an all extra chatter i'm not sure how much well, they're expecting they, from this but they made a bayonetta spinoff that nobody asked for that didn't sell well so maybe they you know they need to recoup some of the costs from <laughs> with, that with the wonderful 101 remastered deal and they're like outsourcing themselves to work on final fantasy 16 which it will probably yeah, actually get them a good amount of money so why are you doing this? I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm still <laughs> expecting Astral Chain 2. 
Sure, soon. maybe, maybe. Soon. This one's just for me, although I have not read this manga or anime or watched it, anything like that. But Tokyo Revengers is a very popular anime. Uh, getting an action RPG on Switch, I just like to see more anime adaptations for, for you know, in terms of games, but specifically not from Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco has like a, a chokehold on everything. Hold, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have they they have pretty much everything. Demon Slayer is the most notable exception. For some reason, Sega got that. Um, but Tokyo Revengers getting an action RPG, pretty cool. Oh, I did. I pressed snooze. I didn't. This, I didn't this man. Stop. This man needs to turn off his alarm. It's it's gone. It's off. It's off. Terrible. Making me edit. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Oh no. Come on. Oh, that, oh they no. know what an alarm is. They know we're recording this early. Oh, it it's all in good fun here on the Nintendo's Life podcast. I'm curious what you think of this one, Tucker. Yeah. So we'll talk about Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope a little bit when we get to the direct. But there was this kind of interview with Yves Guillemot, I believe I'm saying that right, from Ubisoft, talking yeah. about Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope's kind of soft sales. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Kingdom Battle did over 10 million units. Sparks of Hope uh, has not Crazy. even come close to that. So yeah. I'm not going to... Do we have full... official sales numbers for Sparks of Hope? I don't believe so, no. Okay. But um, yeah, I'm not going to read the full quote, but basically Yves Guillemot said that Nintendo urged them not to release this game when they did, which is just yeah. very interesting. Well, a lot of people took this to mean that they should have saved it for the next console, and and that means like, oh, there's a new console coming soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was curious what you thought of this. Well, I don't think it was urged not to release it. It was, why are you developing this now when you could develop it in a few years for the next system and have that be that game in that series for that system? Um, I would actually presume that this might indicate that they'd want to make another game specifically for whatever their next system is, make make this a trilogy. Um, But I find this very interesting because it's something I'm thinking about a lot recently uh, in the wake of Tears of the Kingdom selling so well and now the announcement of Super Mario Bros. Wonders we'll obviously get to. um, What the balance is in sales potential between the hype of a new system coming out and people really wanting to get all the cool big new games with it in that first I don't know, let's say two years or a system having a gigantic fucking install base and there just being more possible people to buy a game. I actually, I, I, I trust Nintendo's thought process on this, uh, that they usually release only one game per series on each console. That is largely the case. Some, there are some exceptions, obviously Pokemon, um, but you never getting more, more than one Mario Kart, more than one smash bros. Um, usually not even more than one, 3d mario or zelda even uh so i think that they're probably right um but i also don't think that that's a really a great reason why a great excuse of why this game didn't sell well i think strange marketing and an oversaturated market at the time i mean this released within a a, a couple month period of uh, the highest selling pokemon game of all time bandana 3 which had been in uh, in development for a long time and that was a packed holiday season uh so i think it just got lost in the shuffle to be honest game reviewed well people liked it it, from what i've heard it's better than the first one uh there's nothing wrong with the game i think i think they just put it out at the wrong at the bad time in terms of how busy the year was not in terms of oh there was already another one of these games on the system, so I'm not going to play it. Because I don't think that's the mindset of most people. I think it's the mindset of Nintendo. But people will buy, obviously, Call of Duty every year, six of them on the same system. People buy sequels on the same systems constantly. It doesn't kill their sales potential. And frankly, it usually helps them because the install base and the fan base was set up. Um, so I, I don't think that release timing in terms of where it was in the Switch's life cycle impacted it much, if at all. Yeah, and I think Nintendo itself is learning that they can do more than one, like you said, with Tears of the Kingdom, Splatoon, Xenoblade, um, yeah. Fire Emblem, WarioWare, WarioWare we'll get to, uh, 2D yeah. Mario. Yeah, I think they're learning that you can do more than one, at least mm. of these uh, certain franchises. Splatoon 3, I think, is the most interesting because that is so multiplayer focused, like Mario yeah. and like Smash Bros. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope just came out at the wrong time. It is a better game than Kingdom Battle, but Kingdom Battle A had... Well, first of all, it leaked like eight months before it was announced. It did. But it was announced at so E3 2017. Sparks of Hope leaked early, too. You remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah, it did. But there yeah. was like official website pages that people found. It's like, are you, I can't believe this fucking happened two times in a row for the same series. <laughs> Maybe soft, not not the, you know, safe, sturdiest ship. But uh, yeah, Kingdom Battle was revealed and released within like two months. It was a yeah. very short marketing cycle. Yeah, Kingdom no. Battle, or, or sorry, Sparks of Hope was revealed a full year and a half before it came out. Crazy. Um, 
I think that just that that inherent intrigue of it being, uh, you know, Kingdom Battle being a announced and released very quickly. This new mm-hmm. idea, first year yeah. of the Switch, it just also to that giving Ubisoft a Nintendo license and working alongside creators like Miyamoto. I mean, you remember it was Eve Skimmel and uh, and Shigeru Miyamoto standing on stage holding fucking guns. I mean, that that has mean potential, and it did. Uh, where was that for Spark of the Pope? No, it's just kind of a normal thing now. I think you're right. Yeah, it doesn't have that kind of same kind of intrigue anymore. Yeah. But I, like, once again, Sparks of Hope is better than the first game. I didn't finish it. I put probably maybe 15 hours into it. It's a great game. I hope yeah. they do another similar kind of thing. Sure. Not this necessarily, but something something else with Mario. Because yeah. I think Ubisoft does have some sort of juice in them for, uh, yeah. for something here. Yeah. And it definitely helps diversify Ubisoft. I mean, we were actually talking uh, last week or the week before about how Ubisoft is actually in a reasonably good place right now with a couple big interesting diverse games uh but the only like really colorful game they put out is the mario and rabbits games and those games are very different from everything else so um it's a good thing for them to be doing and it's really cool that nintendo and ubisoft have this friendship i mean it's what it's it's three games now that they've collaborated on including starlink um so i'd like to see this continue into the future i hope i mean this sounds pretty defeatist of eve skimoni's like oh man we we should have done it we made a great game but it didn't it didn't do anything I hope this doesn't make him like give up because the the Ubisoft and Nintendo collaboration is bizarre and unique and surprisingly fruitful creatively. So I hope we, you're right. I hope we see another one of these yeah. or, or even if it's them trying their hand at a different gameplay style or something. Yeah. Give them, give them like a Zelda tactics game or something. I think that could be cool. Well, that, yeah, I don't know where you pulled that out from, but sure. Well, I, don't, I think I don't know. Not not maybe not another Mario plus Rabbids. Just something else. Sure. They want oh, this, yeah. it's the same tactics team. Maybe mm-hmm. like Zelda. We haven't. How is it not a Zelda tactics? That seems kind of weird to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of tactics games. All right. Final small news story. And Tucker, it, the fact that this is going in the small news court, uh, small news category. Um, I think we gotta we gotta match the energy that Nintendo was giving this game. Yes. Yes. So this was hilarious. The day that Nintendo announced the direct. So obviously that was on what June or sorry uh, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, it was actually about 48 hours ago at the time of recording. Yeah, it was about 48 hours ago. In between announcing the Direct and airing the Direct, Nintendo just shat out a trailer for everybody 1-2 Switch. A trailer? A... a, (laughs) They made a video. They uploaded a video about that game. They uploaded a video about everybody 1-2 Switch, which gave us a, a... kind of more concrete idea of what it is this yes. is one of the most bizarre marketing cycles for a nintendo game i've ever seen yes. i think it's, it's listen obviously you know we're gonna be talking about this forever dropping it's dropping <laughs> dropping the announcement on june oh 1st God. and for a june 30th release that was weird obviously we had heard you know a year ago that the game play tested very poorly yeah. the fact that they dropped this trailer in between the announcement for the direct and the direct airing is the worst vote of confidence i have ever seen for a video game yeah this looks horrible it does it absolutely does and when we talked about it last time and when we i were talked optimistic. about it with yeah we i'm i was pretty optimistic about it because i liked one to switch and i and i thought that the idea of them taking inspiration from other party games namely jackbox might become something kind of interesting and distinct for nintendo but everything that i saw outside of one kind of interesting mini game uh in that i I put heavy air quotes on trailer it was like a live action gameplay demo i mean it wasn't like a highly edited interspersing uh screen like screen videos and uh and the like the cutscenes in game and stuff it was just a video of like 50 to 100 people looking like assholes in a fucking held hotel ballroom with mc horace on a stage um but this game demoed so poorly here. Uh, I am shocked at how little intrigue there seems to be for the vastly smaller amount of mini games that are in this collection. There's and 16. Now all the information that we heard last year is making a lot of sense. You watch these people stand there and move their phones back and forth like this for, I don't know, you know, it's probably... 45 seconds a minute worth of gameplay total for that whole thing and that is the most basic possible motion game you could you could design okay it's cool that it's like a huge group of people 
does that really impact the gameplay at all? You're not really interacting with each other in, in that one, which does seem like it's one that can be designed for a bunch of people. It does not have the intrigue of HD Rumble, as I know you want to get to. It has less variety in the package. And almost none of them seem like they're really taking advantage of having giant groups of people, have being on Nintendo Switch hardware. It just seems like an incredibly lazy and uninspired package. I, I am fully prepared to dislike this game. And I would, not, I would not have said that one week ago. This trailer sold the game to me less. I will still buy it because I'm a shill and I think it's funny. And I can't wait to play it with my friends and make fun of it. But I think this looks bad. I think it looks terrible. I tweeted out a poll. I don't know if you voted on it, Tucker. Will this game review worse or better than the Lord of the Ring God? Oh, I saw that. I, I saw don't that. know. Because there is so little being offered here. Specifically talking yeah. about the AC Rumble thing. Listen, 1-2 Switch gets so much shit. And I think yeah. I think mostly justifiably so. Sure. But I enjoy introducing that game to new people. Because AC Rumble yeah. is still yeah. interesting and fun for people that have not tried it. And even when yes, I go absolutely. back and play and do like the ball counting mini game, it's still pretty interesting. There aren't yeah. any Switch games that really use that the way sure. that I think they could have. By introducing this this these the phones, you pretty much strip away all creativity. Because mm, phones mm. don't have HD rumble. So it's all these yeah. really basic um, uh, motion games, motion like you game, said. Yeah. And that, they none of them look interesting. I fa in fact, the only one that kind of looked interesting, and you could, and here's the thing, you could do this without the game, is the mm -hmm. fucking musical chairs where you just sit down. Yeah. That's there the was only that one that was that... also the one where they were swinging the sword in the circle trying to, like, hit people. That actually looks kind of fun. But that... also, I've done that with someone blindfolded in a pool noodle. So, like, you're just digitizing that. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it needs to exist. If you have a group of a, a big group of people, you can just do these things without a video game. With with one two switch, you you know you needed the rumble, you needed the feedback, you needed the yeah. thing telling you to pull up your gun and fire. Yeah, IR sensor. Yeah, it's it's so disappointing because when we we heard it was gonna be using phones, I was like, oh, it's gonna be like Jackbox, maybe not yeah. quite like that because people get inappropriate with Jackbox, and that's not gonna happen in a Nintendo game, but be able to play it with friends over discord or something streamers would be be able to do this game that's completely we did talk out of the about question. the fact that on the page there was no online connectivity so uh that was already out of the question if you read the fine print but i agree that this is taking actually almost no inspiration from jackbox other than use your phone connected to console which is the less the less interesting aspect of jackbox i mean from what we saw it is motion only stuff, which means that the fact that you're using a smartphone and it has a touch screen and a camera and all that stuff doesn't seem to be used in any way. Uh, and which means that you're not using the smartphone to its fullest, which has a solid amount of potential as nine fucking Jackbox games have shown. And you're not using the Joy-Con to almost any of their potential. They're just used as a stick that can be waddled around. I, 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 I uh, this is this is going to be a notorious Nintendo game. This Dude, is going this to is be going down in history. Like, Jesus Christ, man! The presentation but, uh, itself to MC Horace being there, showing up. The idea that oh. at the t at the start of the thing, they're like, "We brought sixteen content creators. Those are not real people. Those are no. not content creators. Maybe no, in the loosest not. sense, maybe they could be Nintendo employees. Oh, they create yeah. content. They aren't YouTubers. They're not. Draw the completionist isn't there. Like what? No. I actually saw that he explicitly said he wasn't yeah, there. Yeah, because there was someone, someone that kind of looked like him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you see a giant guy with a big black beard, and you're like, hey, it could be it could be Gerard. But yeah, that, it felt so fake. I mean, when they're, like, zooming in on their faces, and it's like, everybody, one, two, switch. And they're, There's a like, hundred players? Out. Whoa, whoa. It's like, dude, I don't understand who this like game is for. I don't know who this game is for, because one, two, switch is, like, a fun drinking game. Sure. Yeah. Everybody, one, two, switch <laughs> is a fun game for wedding receptions. When you have a huge group of people, Ballroom. it's yeah. a good it's a good game for conventions. Maybe at PAX West we'll get a big group going or something. But oh, we need to. We are gonna do that. Do we that. are gonna do Holy that. Holy shit! But I just don't understand. Like the they didn't show any scenarios where it's like, oh, you're playing with two people. One yeah. two switch worked for like you know small like group get-togethers because it's mm. one on one most of the time. Yeah, or every all the time actually, right? It's all just two player. Yeah, or eating contest or baby. Yeah. Which is one player. Yeah. Just wanna you wanna make sure you guys don't yeah. think that we forgot about eating contest and baby. <laughs> and technically, uh shake the bottle shaking like soda pop minigame 
that can be played with a bigger group because you're just handing it around because it's hot potato. So, you know, I'm just, I want to make sure everyone knows that we're on the same page We're, here. we're a hardcore one, two, switch players. We, we know, know our stuff. the mini games. <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. This game just looks so... It... We will be reviewing this in two weeks. Yeah, I mean, if I can find enough people to play it. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. I, I have a plan with all my friends. We're, I'm getting, we're getting our girlfriends over here. Abram's going to be in town. We're inviting the boys over. We're going to make an event out of this probably uh, under the influence. Um, but... We will have any outs of fun that it can possibly ha be had in this game. So if you are hoping for a positive one to uh, everybody one to switch review, I I might be the only person that could possibly give you that. <laughs> um, and I'm not even confident even slightly. Well, I just wonder too, like to I don't, we don't get review codes or anything. Obviously, we're no. tiny baby Nintendo YouTuber. But yeah. I do want like a are they sending review codes and also like what does the review process for a game like this even go like. <laughs> Hey, Gene Park from the Washington Post or whatever, you have to get 50 people to play this with you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's not going to work. Are. No, yeah. Weird game. Weird Nintendo. I cannot, I cannot wait. I, I will be refreshing when the embargo list for this fucking game. It, it, but you're right, even if they're, if they're even... I don't think they're... I, I bet there won't be reviews on day one. I bet there won't be reviews. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna send copies for this game. Redfall sound an ass fucking game, goddamn. Hey, Redfall sent copies out a day before. A day before. That's enough time to play the whole game. That's As enough time we'll to play this whole game. Get to. Because let's be honest, this game is not gonna last more than ninety minutes for all its content. No, it's only sixty mini games, and none of them seem that. Yeah. Much in more in depth yeah. than before. Which how many? How many did one two switch have? Like twenty eight, I believe. Twenty five, somewhere in there. Yeah. So almost double. What are you doing? What are you doing, Nintendo? God. You know what? I, I, can't, I, I can't wait. I, well, okay, well, here's the thing. Would you rather them not release it or just release it anyway? No, I, because... I want them to release it. Yeah. I, it's, it, it'll, be, it'll be a part of history. And yeah. I, I like the idea of this slotting into Nintendo's history in a bad way. This is not a good thing for Nintendo, but I don't give a fuck. It's going to be funny. It's already made. You might as well just release yeah. it. Tucker, will MC Horace be in the next Smash Bros? Um, A assist trophy. That, that's that all that's all even if it's just a spirit i will be so happy yeah if mc horse pops up because this is Ooh, my, possibly they, the most iconic nintendo character a spirit of like the milk guy <laughs> just the actual human being in the yeah, game yeah the guy like... yeah <laughs> that, that guy makes some fucking faces that's one thing too there with one two switches reveal trailer not to talk about this for too long but there were so many like funny moments where it's like what is this they're milking oh they're they're yeah, shaving yeah there wasn't like a there wasn't a trailer. You're right. There wasn't. Yeah. They didn't even try. The marketing budget for this game had to be less one than, guy in a camera. Yeah, like less than twenty thousand total for all these people to come out to Tokyo. Like, <laughs> yeah. Very bizarre Insane. game. Wait, come back. Uh, I guess maybe probably not next week, but the week after for the uh, yeah, yeah for the everybody one two switch in depth <laughs> in depth discussion. I do. It'll have be happening, and I'll probably be doing a gameplay video with a room and my. Friend friends and also probably a review of this game so a lot a lot of everybody want to switch content uh, a up. game that will burn quick and bright not we, bright. we will be playing it at packs that is going to happen i will make sure i bring my Please, copy god all right tucker before we get into the direct though let's get into what we are playing you guys here because you played so much yeah i played i played like five or six games this week um, that's a lot of games i mean that's a yeah. tucker amount of games i didn't even play that many games this week yeah and you're you're notorious for playing a million games so i mentioned yeah. last week i got my series x in um i got a really good deal so i um i was messing around with game pass i guess i'll go through those games first play through unpacking me and my girlfriend was kind of taking off very cute game oh i love that it's, game i love that game i'm a little conflicted on it if you don't know what unpacking okay. is it's the game where you just put stuff on shelves and it's kind of this is really cozy game i like cozy games yeah. like this every once in a while it's a little annoying sometimes from like an ocd perspective because like there are certain things they don't let you put in certain places and usually yeah. it, you know they, they make sense where they want you to put it but sometimes i'll take all my time making like a really nice like you know put put, put all the plushes on the desk all the, like the little birds on the on the on the shelf and then it'll be like no but you gotta rotate the, the microwave i'm just like it's a little annoying, but it was a fun game. It's you know, it's like four hours for everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, I enjoyed that. I also played through a game I had wanted to play for a long time on on Game Pass because I love Image and Form, the developers of SteamWorld. Mm. Dig, I played through the oh, gunk. The gunk. The gunk. Yeah, this game's fine. I played that day one. Yeah, it's this fine. Game's fine. It's, it's it's nothing special. Uh, there was it's very much like some... a PS2 GameCube era, just like kind of simple action platformer kind yeah. of deal. Very short. Um, very yeah. very maybe could have gone a little bit longer. Um, because they have like this whole like thing where you get upgrades. I didn't even really need feel the need to do that. Yeah. Some of them I didn't even know what they did. I'm gonna be honest. There was one like green thing you shoot out, and it was something about energy resources. I don't 
I don't even know what that was. Bo, but... I played this game on the first day it came out. Do you think it has stuck with me very much? No. Of course not. I liked it for what it was. I mean, it was a yeah. totally good way to spend a couple hours, but um, I, I think that the sucking up goop mechanic is kind of like as an inverse uh, Splatoon slash uh, Mario Sunshine kind of thing. Uh, I think that's actually kind of cool. Um, and I think it could easily be expanded into a larger game uh, with slightly more Metroidvania style elements of different upgrades that you're getting in a larger world, a little more combat, because the combat is the worst part of the game easily. I mean, there's like there's three or four times really enemies. combat even. And yeah, yeah I mean, it, technically there is, but... It's it's barely present, um, but it's a good idea and it's a totally fine game for what it is, but it needs, it begs to be built upon. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a fun novelty just going through it. I will say the sucking up goop, yeah, that, that was like the main draw because I like you know, like Mario Sunshine and like you said, Splatoon, yeah. the inverse of that. It wasn't that satisfying to do though. Like, sure. the, like the, maybe it's because the Xbox controller doesn't have much going on in it in terms of rumble, but I didn't feel like there wasn't like a satisfying sensation. Like, oh, I'm sucking up all this goop. Sure. Um, because once you sucked up like a big splotch of it, it kind of just cleared out the entire area. Yeah. But I enjoyed it for what it was. I would like to see Image and Form try more stuff. Although I think they're doing like three yeah. or four Steam World games right now. So um, I love, I love Image and Form. And are zero more. of them dig three? Hopefully, dude, I cannot believe that has not happened yet. Jesus Christ! It's Steam been it's World it's been six so years. Good. It's been six it's years since so Steam World League Two. Can you believe that? Oh. Steam World League Two is so good. I mean, that's one of my favorite games of all time. Goddamn! I also put good on you, Game Farm. I also put more time than I, I care to admit into Power Wash Simulator on <laughs> Game Pass. I have oh, I never like I've never played a game like this. I've always been like like back when House Flipper came out. I was like, oh, this looks like it could be fun. The and fuck then is House Flipper? it's just a game where you fix up houses and sell them. Um, very, very simulator based, but like farming simulator, I never really looked into that. But this one yeah. looked uh, very interesting to me, especially knowing its its roots. This is made by Future Lab, which is in parts exciting to me because I love Future Lab, Future Lab, but also sad because they used to make really good games. Tucker, they made the Velocity yeah. 2x and Velocity Ultra on PS Vita, some of the best Vita games, like easily. Um, they're also on PS4. Okay. Those games are fantastic. If you have not played them, I highly recommend it. Some of my favorite indie games of all time. Mm. So to see them kind of. I don't want to say cash in with the the simulator craze. A little mm. disappointing, but um, this is just fun. Sat another kind of kind of like unpacking, just a satisfying game. I played some co op with Caleb. Uh, we're just just co oping, power washing. Sometimes the levels are a little too long. It, you know, I, I I would just do like the quick zoom, come back to it later because they expect you to clean an entire park, and that takes way too long. But uh, yeah. I'm not sure how much more I'll play of this. I'm probably not gonna finish it in in close no. there, but. It's fun. Uh, I think it's a pretty substantial game. I mean, they are constantly adding content. Yeah, I downloaded the Tomb Raider pack, and the and there's a uh, Final Fantasy VII Clouds Bike yeah. pack. Because Square Enix published this game. SpongeBob's cool. House pack. Yeah, that's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Bizarre. No, it's a very strange game. I think it's pretty good for what it is, but it it I feel like it should be something that really appeals to me because I'm very meticulous. I'm organized. I love cleaning things. Um, I'm I'm a little bit frustrated. My bed's not made next to me right now. Um, but I didn't like the controls. Uh, it, it does it's like it's a pc uh, game. <laughs> it's definitely yeah, a PC exactly game. exactly i would have a lot more i would probably be addicted to this game if i had a good pc that could run it um but i don't uh, and playing it on xbox the controller was like i'm like missing a little bit and i need to get really specific and i'm switching through the things i'm like this just isn't mechanically satisfying because of the the controller that i'm on sure that's a totally valid criticism uh i guess i'm just gonna finish up my games if you're okay with that because i have sure. two more Another Game Pass game. Tucker, I need to talk about Redfall. I, out of morbid oh, curiosity, right. I was like, I need to play Redfall. I'm just curious to see how it is. It can't be yeah. that bad. I usually, you know, like Mighty Number no. 9 and, and Babylon's Fall, which we mentioned, I normally play these games and I'm like, oh, this actually isn't that bad. People are just being harsh. Tucker, this might be one of the worst AAA games I've ever played. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I told I, you. I keep a, I keep a I list. I warned you. I keep a list of, uh, on Google Drive or Google, Google Docs or whatever, yeah, Google Docs of every game I, I play and I put like a score next to it. I gave this game a three. That is the lowest yeah. game score I think I've ever given a video game. Mm, I okay. I cannot believe how fucking bad it is. The game itself is just like mediocre. It's fine. It's whatever. It's like a five out of ten. You know, yeah. you're just doing these little outposts. You're running around the map. The game feels like shit. It feels like a PS2 FPS. It looks yeah. horrible. It runs really bad. You know, 30 FPS. Least of this game's issue. When you're yeah, around, is. when is. you're when you're around like fire though, there are certain parts of the quest where you're like you're going to like this this helicopter crash or something. It dropped to like 10 FPS for me in these mm -hmm. areas. I could not believe how bad it was. But Tucker, the 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 main issue with this game is that it's actually broken. 
It is actually mm. just a broken video game. Yeah. So I played like seven hours in one sitting. I, I was just plowing this game, Tucker. Oh. I was I was actually oh, I was having fun from the aspect of oh I was playing with two friends, right? Yeah. Okay. You played multiplayer. I never got that distinct sure. pleasure. Sorry. Sure. However, and it, you know it's funny moments. Constantly, animations are breaking. Characters are a posing, yeah. just floating around. Very funny stuff. Characters um glitching through the ground. AI yeah. just disappearing or running into the wall. However, I couldn't finish it because we were doing the boss of the first act. There's two maps in this game. We were doing the the first boss, the first like major boss, um, where you leave the first area of the map. It's like this big vampire, I guess, right? Um, sure. and like this bigger. It is. He has he has a big health bar. It's like the actual boss. There's like other like we did, dude. We did all the outposts. We did all the side quests in the first area. Why um, are you okay? Why the I fuck don't did know. you do that? Well, my friend was like, "Oh, we got to do all the side quests," but my He's friend will not. My friend, will, yeah, well. He will not be playing this game anymore because when we did the boss fight, we beat it very easily. The game's very easy. When the boss was like supposed to despawn, it was supposed to let us leave the arena. Some weird visual glitch happened, and then it didn't let us leave the arena, so we reset our game. When we got back into the game, his save file was just gone. <laughs> it was just completely gone. Mm. That's not... I mean, that's I would say that's not good, but it's ultimately probably a good thing because it stopped you from playing fucking Redfall. And I listen. I listen. I I know it's so mentally ill. I hate playing a game like this and then not finishing it. I was ready to put it on my list, being like, yeah. "Oh, I beat it." But yeah, since the game actually prohibited us from finishing it, I'm I'm making an exception. This game's fucking horrible. I cannot believe a AAA game from the developers of Dishonored, Deathloop, yeah. yeah. Prey came out in such a state. This is unacceptable. No, it's it's a bizarre game because you you mentioned a lot of things sort of like technically and error wise, but I also think that just like on a systems level and a structure level, it's it's not good at all because you you're right that like okay mechanically it's like mediocre, but I think uh, running from place to pit place and having to return to the fucking firehouse every time and uh, the distance between enemies and the enemy ai these are elements that make the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of what could be cool and shooting and using your powers which by the way you barely have at the beginning of the game make it makes them so unengaging and like backwards thinking it's like what's the point and there's like what's the point of the loot you gotta you got a really slow ass upgrade tree that doesn't feel very satisfying these characters are incredibly fucking annoying the story's not told in an interesting way they won't shut the fuck up. It is a bizarre game. I think there are basically no redeeming factors for Redfall. I agree. I, I completely agree. And it's also, yeah, you mentioned the, the skill trees and stuff. That entire... I can't believe this was supposed to be a live service game. I don't even know what they were going to do. I don't know what their yeah. plan was. I played as Layla. She had um this, like, purple teleport where you can, like, yeah. jump up, and then uh, she had, like, a shield. I almost never used my abilities because they, they didn't really do much. Yeah. Um, and I can imagine this game clearly designed for, for multiplayer, but if you play single player, what, what are you doing with these abilities? There's a whole healer class. What are you doing as a healer if you're by yourself? <laughs> this game is a fucking mess. I, I, I can't believe how bad it is. Yeah. I warned you. I said this. I'm like episode two. Right. But you. that's what I'm saying though. With Babylon's fall and all these other games, usually I give the game of the benefit of the doubt and it's yeah. normally just like fine. And I think if, if this game didn't have those, those actual technical issues, I would have probably thought it was like a five, but yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> now I am playing one absolutely bursting game, Tucker. Okay. I don't know how much I talked about this last week because I really hadn't played that much. I maybe played three hours, but Yakuza zero has so, yeah, been taking that. over Tucker. This game is fucking awesome. I, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm a bona fide Yakuza fan. I'm going all the way. I think I'm about halfway, th maybe, maybe not quite halfway through it. I'm on chapter nine, um, which uh, is, I think, there, I think there's 16 chapters or 17 chapters. I'm not sure how long they all are. Some of them are shorter. Um, last time when we talked about this, A, I had not gotten introduced to Majima, the guy with the eye patch. Yeah. And I had not done that many side quests or sub stories as they call them. Obviously, I'll need to sit on this for months, years. This game might have the best side quest in any video game I've ever played. That's it what is, people say about Yakuza. It is unreal. Or sorry, like a dragon. Yeah, like a dragon. I'm, I'm calling it Yakuza. The, the official title is Yakuza Zero. Of course. Um, no, they, in, yeah, for that in, game. In the yeah. yeah, but the amount of variety, the amounts of weird, zany stuff going on, you, you go help uh Kiri Kiryu goes to help this this um <laughs> this this girl at like some BDSM club learn how to be a dominant 
and then you're in the park, like, training her how to insult you, and then <laughs> you're, like, helping her, and you're, like, watching her test it on a customer, but then you go through the main story, and it's just these fucking burly-ass Yakuza dudes just fucking going at it, dude. It's so good. The contrast between the goofy shit and the serious shit. I've never played a game like this. I've never played Shenmue. Maybe maybe that's similar. But this is unlike any game I've ever played. And I, Shenmue's I, way I, more self-serious from what I, I know. I really like it. My only issue, and this is crazy, is the combat I don't think is very fun. In fact, right yeah. before we recorded, I um I was I was playing through. Right now I'm playing as Kiryu um, on this chapter I'm one. I keep getting stun locked out the ass. Like I literally just cannot get up. I don't. Mm. I'm playing on normal. I'm not. I'm, I should. Maybe I should have done it easy just to get through it and enjoy the story because that's definitely what I'm here for. But um, the combat's not great. There's all these different stances you use. Um, different like fighting stances. And Kiryu has his own set, and uh, Majima has his own set. And this kind of goes to the story as well. But Majima is much more fun and more interesting, in my opinion. His current story sure. that is going on with this blind girl is very good, and I love his character. Kiryu, Kiryu, right now is more more of a blank slate. I feel like more of like a, just a generic guy. But yeah, Majima sure. has a really interesting backstory already. You have also got six games to get to know Kiryu. Yeah, that, that's I'm a little like sad about that because I know Majima isn't. <laughs> the main character yeah. but um there was like five chapters in a row where i was just i was just playing as majima and that was fantastic and going back to hear you now and just all these mini games you're doing this batting mini game bowling um dude it's it's really good i i, I was afraid i wouldn't like it as much as everybody says but now that i'm really getting into the you know the woods of it mm -hmm. this game's awesome I, i'm i'm gonna try i looked at how long to beat for all the games this is the longest one outside of oh. uh, the newest one yakuza 1 or yakuza kawami is only like 12 hours so i'm probably just gonna really? knock that out like real quick sure. after this yeah and just go yeah, through cool. I'm, I, I was saying last week i might skip to uh the ichiban one like a dragon the rpg yeah, but yeah. i think i'm just gonna keep going and, and release we'll see it. what happens yeah i mean you're you're in it sounds like you're having a great time and that's awesome and, and again i'll be tangentially following along your your experience here because i don't i don't have the fucking time for that especially not this year and with the amount of games announced at summer game fest and at the nintendo direct i was sitting there thinking yesterday as i was like writing down all the release dates for things oh he final Fantasy 16 game. i i have i had this yesterday i was just playing yakuza zero i was like i cannot yeah. start final fantasy yet <laughs> you, got, no, you, you have you have to push through yeah absolutely yeah. um but yeah that, no it's not gonna fucking happen for me but uh it is a lot yeah cool Glad you're. I'm glad you're really enjoying it. This could be a. I I can see you having like a Yakuza poster behind you in like a year. In a year, yeah. You're just a giant I, fan. Yeah, I don't know how much I'll pace myself. Yakuza Kiwami, I said I might just pump out because it's short, but yeah. I want to pace myself, but also the sure. allure of potentially. I don't know how I make time for this catching up for uh, uh, like a Dragon Gaiden in November. There's no mm. fucking way. No, but no chance. No shot in hell. Maybe. If there was you're no also other a crazy games man. I am a crazy man. But um, I don't know. The thing is, with the sub stories being such a, a great draw for this game, I don't want to rush through it and just beat it. Yeah, no, beat it. I, I really want to take my time with these games and unpack them, uh, pun intended, unpacking. But yeah, that's what I've been playing this week. What about you? Um, I, I did. I, as I was saying, I was like interacting with other people, so like there wasn't as much video game playing on. I know it's terrible. I'm sad about it too. Um, but I did end up playing a couple games. Primarily, um, I received this suggestion from Abram. A game called Citizen Sleeper, uh, of which the sequel was just announced, of which Abram is very um, passionate about and also professionally involved um, through, through his job, um, helping some of the marketing of that game and stuff. But uh, he, it's one of his favorite games, and he gave it a 5 out of 5, and I remember him talking to me about it on our Backlog Banter show uh, uh, about a year ago, I think. Um, and it's something that I never really thought about playing until he was like, well, just, just play through it. You know, it's it's not that long. Just just try it. Because, again, you gave it a 5 out of 5. And I, I like this game. For the uninitiated, Citizen Sleeper is a text-based RPG. Uh, it is not, not in the way that, like, Zork is, where it's only text. But in that uh, there's basically nothing other than the menus of this world that you're on. There's It's a... Uh, sci-fi game where you play as a character called a sleeper, which is like a fucking android and uh, what what are, what are they called in Blade Runner? Uh, rep, uh, replicants, something like oh, that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it, it, like a, a android type, not quite human person. 
and you're on this uh, spaceport called Erlen's Eye, uh, and you're just trying to survive. And that uh, the story of it is very flexible because there are multiple classes to choose from that shift the way the story goes, and you uh, can interact with people in different times and different ways. Um, and really, all you do is wake up, roll your dice to for a chance to do blank when you're interacting with blank, uh, and then what? Eventually, you get little dialogue bits, text-based dialogue bits with uh, the different characters. And I found the game to be incredibly engaging for its first half. The first half of the game, you are balancing quite a few things. You have just woken up. You don't know what's going on. And you are you have a life bar at the top that ticks down every single day. And so and if it reaches zero, it's game over. So you have to find medicine to um, repair yourself and keep that bar up. And when the bar is higher, you have more dice to work with. So you have more opportunities to roll uh, on whatever thing you're doing. Um, and you also have to manage your food level. Um, and if you start starving and you because you haven't eaten, then you lose two chunks of health per day. So it's a really interesting balance between like, feeling like you're always on the edge to survive and that your like body is always declining and you're like trying to scrounge for fucking a few dollars just to, like go to the ramen store and buy a bowl of ramen to like keep yourself alive for another day. I found that tension um in the survival aspect of it in a tech uh, largely text and dice based game to be really compelling and it made me like kind of stress and I'm like okay I have to balance like am I going to go try to make some money that isn't like a dangerous job that I could get hurt on? but I might make some money that's going to let me eat or buy some medicine for the next couple of days. Or am I going to go help this person that they're, they, they're, there's like little timers on most of the quests. And if you don't do them within a couple of days, they're gone. So there's a really interesting sort of time management survival element to it that I found super gripping and like really helped me engage with this world and want to get to know the characters. But then I had to like sacrifice getting to know some characters for others because I only had a certain amount of time. But eventually I made enough money to where I bought enough medicine so I didn't have to worry about my health bar. And because I had so much money, I didn't have to worry about food. And so then the timers didn't really matter to me because I had full dice and I was just like breezing through things. And by the end of the game, I had I had extra medicine, I had extra money, and there was basically no tension or momentum in the way that was engaging me so much at the beginning of the game. And so I think this game starts off very strong, but I think it loses a lot of steam by the end, especially because the the narrative path that I was set on didn't really go anywhere. Like, I just stumbled into a quest uh, after doing basically everything that my side of the game had to offer, and then the character was like, hey, you want to get on the ship and leave? And I'm like, hmm, okay. And I did, and then it was credits, and I was like, huh? Like, it wasn't like a climactic moment. There wasn't like any narrative cohesion. I like just met this person. Like it wasn't like they weren't super important to the narrative, um, which there is an interesting narrative, but I don't think it ties itself together, itself together narratively in very compelling ways. I think it loses a lot of steam gameplay wise. Um, it's a good game. It's very interesting. Um, and I'm interested to see what they do with a sequel, but I think it's a very imbalanced game because it starts off so strong, but then just doesn't maintain its own identity for its entire runtime. Is this on Switch? Yes, that's how I played it. It sounds very interesting. Maybe not something that would be up my alley, but I did play a, another game uh, kind of similar to it based on the way you're describing it called Tharsis on PS4. Never heard of that. It also came to Switch later on. I'm Googling it. And yeah, people are saying if you like Citizen Sleeper, maybe try Tharsis, where you had your ship, you had dice rolls, you had like your jobs and you were managing all this stuff. Hmm. I'm not sure if Citizen Sleeper would be something for me, but okay. it sounds... Did you like Tharsis? I enjoyed what I played of it, but I, I didn't, like, get super deep into it. You know, I wasn't, like, doing multiple runs and all that, trying out all different things. But um, I enjoyed what I played of it. But, yes, it is, this, this sounds good. I, I mean, I've obviously, Abram's been praising this game for months on Twitter. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds yeah, I, I, I feel I feel a little let down. And maybe it was the hype of him telling me this is, like, one of the best games he's ever played. But when I started feeling flaws in it, which I think are pretty apparent flaws that I mean, I still like the game. At the end of the day, I get like a you know six, seven out of ten. Um, but because I was feeling those flaws, I'm like, damn, this this kind of sucks. Like, I wanted this to be like a new nine out of ten, ten out of ten for me. Like, put it on my favorite games list, and I just, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's a perfect game. I think, I think it's, I think it's majorly flawed in some ways. And uh, so 
even though I liked it, I think I was still disappointed at the end of the day because it didn't meet those high expectations that I had been, uh, I had, that had been poured forth to me. So I think actually you are in an interesting position to experience this game because you have the, 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 the more toned down experience that I'm espousing. Like, okay, there are some flaws. Keep these in mind. Maybe like consider a few of these things. And then Abram saying this is one of the best games they ever played. You might be able to sort of like synthesize those and like not feel hype or dishype and just be like, okay, play it for what it is. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, but I I would caution anyone to think this is like a, a flawless masterpiece. Yeah, managing expectations is important. Uh, like, yeah. I'm talking about Yakuza Zero, and I, that game's been hyped up by a, a very small group of people for the past ten years, and it, it's yeah. delivering on those expectations for me. But you and I both had the same experience with Metroid Prime, where we hear nothing but good things. We play it. And I think that game's like a seven out of 10. It's still a good game, but because of those expectations, it's easier to mm. point out the negatives. You yeah. Know? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. But yeah, I mean, so does, I might, I might try it out. How much is it? Do you know? Yeah. Uh, I just downloaded it from his account. So I didn't buy it myself, oh. but uh, it can't be that expensive. Um, and it's also, I probably took like six hours, something like that. Okay. Um, he told me I could beat it on a plane flight. And I'm like, brother, where the, where the fuck are you flying? <laughs> like he, homies flying across the united states every day maybe and maybe it's because i did like everything on my path because I, I i completed all the quests in my air in the section of the game that i was playing um but i might try it out it sounds interesting yeah. plus like yeah like yeah he's been here you know talking about it for so long yeah it says here you also are playing more street fighter 6 tucker world tour specifically yeah well so i was I'm playing sorry. a lot of street fighter 6 as i indicated before i left for austin and then very unfortunately, I didn't have a PS5 while I was traveling, so I had no way to play that game, um, which is unfortunate because I was really getting that momentum. I was uh, doing a lot of the uh, arcade modes, as I think I might have mentioned last time. I had started World Tour. I was dicking around quite a bit with with people on Discord playing on um, in the Battle Hub and you know designing my character for the first time and stuff, and I love Street Fighter Six so much, man, and I really wanted to get into World Tour mode and see what the substantial campaign for this game was so i think it's so cool that they have it in there um and i'm of two minds of world tour mode a i think it is a, a brain dead fucking nothing ass sandwich fucking boring open world action game the, the quests suck the npcs suck <laughs> the world design is not it's fine it's not great um and it's full of like all these weird small design decisions that make you be like, what year did they fucking make this in? But I also think that it has so much weird charm. It's so bizarre. And as a part of a larger package that is otherwise incre like incredibly polished and the top of its game, I'm glad this is in there. Okay, sure, on a like objective quality level, it's not on the par of everything else. And so by that metric, it does actually bring down the package. But for me, it doesn't hurt the other parts of this game that are excellent because it is so uh, di distant from them. Like, you don't have to engage with it at all. In fact, you don't even have to download it, which I think is very interesting. It oh, is really? a separate download. Um, so you, if you want a smaller file size and because you're never going to play World Tour, fucking have a heyday. That's cool. um, but it... Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't know quite know how I feel about it. I am about seven hours in, so I think about halfway, uh, and I've met a little over half the, the main roster of characters, and my character is getting pretty, pretty buffed up, all things considered, and I'm, I'm trying my best to, uh, to get Marisa to like me. Um, Her moves, that's awesome. That's who I, I was going with. I too. love. She's so yeah. much fun. She's definitely my main at the moment. Um, so I'm liking it, but because it's brain dead because it's one of those open world games where you can turn off the volume because you don't give a shit about what anything anyone is saying and you can like just run to the checkpoint and run here and pick up that and i can put on a podcast sometimes that kind of game is fun uh and this does it does that it does the bare minimum so i'm i might say it to the end i'd like to um i, I think it would help me feel like i'm i engage more substantially with with street fighter 6 um because I'm more of a single player guy than a than a multiplayer guy, but I think it's objectively not good, but it's subjectively entertaining. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about uh, Street Fighter Six when it came out. We were both playing it. Just adding to the whole package is really important, yeah. especially yeah. for a fighting game, which usually is missing something. 
I didn't finish World Tour. I probably played about seven hours. I think I was mm. yeah, like halfway through the, the campaign. Do you remember what the last character you met was? I maybe I climbed up a tower and I met Kimberly at the top. That was the last thing I did. I did not get the Kimberly. Uh, I, f- I fought some fridges on the way up there. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> and I did dress like a scientist uh, so that people thought I belonged. I like it's the Blanca outfit. It's good. The, it's so funny. The Blanca <laughs> Chan, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I, I'm not like, yeah, I agree that it's like objectively bad, but I'm happy it's there. I would like yeah. if it was better, but I don't really. Yeah. It'd be, I don't know how you make something like this better. Fighting game campaigns are so weird to do. People are always like, oh, ARMS needs like a, th- a 3D adventure mode. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I guess mm-hmm. that'd be cool, but the core game is gonna be your your two your two D fights with actual three fighter characters. So yeah, it's interesting. You're also playing a We Love Katamari reroll. Yeah, I just beat it yesterday. Oh, um, I cool. actually have not done the Royal Reverie stuff, which is a sort of extra mini campaign where you. I didn't play realize there was actually new content. Uh, yeah, that's what plus Royal Reverie means. We Love Katamari reroll plus Royal Reverie. Um, I believe that is a smaller campaign where you play it's more katamari levels i believe they're all new levels um where you play as the as the king of the cosmos when he was a kid um oh, cool. which i'm excited to get to in terms of I, the katamari story i guess there actually is a reasonably good story in we love katamari um but so i don't know if i've ever gotten a chance to talk about katamari on here or why i i love the series so much uh if you're in our discord you would have seen a couple of days ago i posted me holding a stack of games I own every physical Katamari game that can be owned physically. Uh, now that uh, Wheel of Katamari reroll is here, and also I, I got a copy of Beautiful Katamari, which I can actually play, but I have it, so fuck you, I guess. Um, this game... So Katamari, Damacy, I played it on PS2. One of my first really weird games that I played. It's like... And still to this day, it's like, what genre is this? Like, what what's going on here? Like, I there's nothing really like Katamari. Um, and I loved it. And Katamari Damacy is one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. And I also ended up playing We Love Katamari a couple years later on PS2 hardware. Well, it was the only place it was available until just now. Uh, and I also loved it. And I've always, in the back of my mind, wrestled with Katamari Damacy introduced me to the franchise. And it was the first game. And I love it because of that. But We Love Katamari is, I think, probably the better game in like every way. <laughs> and so then I played uh, Katamari Damacy Reroll. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I love Katamari but I really wanted to see them do We Love Katamari, give that game a second shot. And now I've played We Love Katamari Reroll, and I think I just need to stop saying that Katamari Damacy is my favorite, one of my favorite games and say We Love Katamari is one of my favorite games because this is just better in basically every way. Um, I'm pretty sure if you're listening to this podcast, you've seen Katamari gameplay, so you know, like, getting rolling around a ball, getting bigger, consuming things that are smaller, and you're picking up people, picking up houses, picking up fucking continents, getting gigantic. Um, But what We Love Katamari does is instead of there being just get to this size and this time limit, which is what almost exclusively the stages were in the first game, Katamari Damacy, it introduces a lot more mechanical differences, but it's mostly in the form of goal, different goals in different levels. And there's a, on base level, there's a lot more level variety. There's some underwater levels, there's some space levels, there's some sky levels, there's ones where you start big, there's one where you start small. It's it's, it's a, lot, a lot of variety on that like sort of map level, which the first game actually only had like two or three maps. So that that that's a big bonus. But the goals, I think, are where this game really shines. It's things like uh, make the Katamari bright by only collecting fireflies uh, or make a, a giant bonfire by uh, having your Katamari be on fire and you have to keep collecting collecting things that are burnable to keep your fuel level up or um or the i mean one the final level collecting like a bunch of uh planets all the planets that you've been making across the course of the game you're rolling those up and uh, to try to get the sun at the end and so there's a lot of variety in terms of what you're actually uh how you're actually approaching the level and it doesn't change it mechanically that much you're still just using the two sticks to roll around your katamari but uh, it really keeps the game spicy. It, it, it keeps it uh, feeling fresh, levels level. You don't know what's going to happen next. I played a level yesterday that was uh, pick up the beg- the biggest bear slash cow you can. And almost everything is a bear or a cow, so you got to start dodging bears and cows to find the biggest one you can pick up. And it's just like really strange things like that that don't make any sense but fit the spirit of Katamari and add so much gameplay 
variety within this package. Um, and I, I think I think it's just a remarkable video game. I think it's I think it's genuinely phenomenal. I tried to play Reroll when it came out on Switch back in what 2018, and I it didn't yeah. really click with me that much. Sure. Um, but it's one of those games, kind of like for a long time, Monkey Ball. Although I learned that I don't mm, like Monkey mm. Ball, it's one of those games yeah. that like I look at, and I'm like, I have to like that. That just mm-hmm. inherently looks good. Yeah. So you talking about Lee? We love Katamari. I actually have the PS2 physical over here. I found that at Goodwill uh, not mm. too long ago. Is it the is it the uh, greatest hits version? Because that's what I have, and it makes me incredibly. Do you want me to bring this to you at a uh, at, at Pax? We'll trade. <laughs> Actually, do you want to give? Wait, seriously? I'll there's give no, you my fucking greatest hits copy. No, there's no manual. I think I have the manual. We'll see. If it's not worth that much, I don't think it's worth that much. I'll be dead. Nah, it's probably like a fifteen game. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it right. to you. It doesn't matter. But um. <gasps> Holy shit! <laughs> well, bring me bring me your greatest hits. Let's not get crazy here. We'll trade. But um yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you talking about it, I I kind of want to give this game a chance again, especially now that both of these are on Switch. Yeah. Maybe I'll go back. Are they, they are co op, correct? There yes, there are co op. Uh, there are co op levels. The the whole game is not co op. No. Okay. Uh, okay. but there are co op uh, levels, and I actually I haven't played them in uh in We Love Katamari. There was a co- there was a co op mode in the PS2 game, and I believe that's the only co op element in Reroll in Katamari Damashi Reroll. Okay. Uh, which is just sort of like a. Who, see who can get bigger in a limited amount of time. Like it's a special stage designed for multiplayer. I actually don't know what the multiplayer elements of are uh, in We Love Katamari, Reroll plus Road Reverie. Um, but I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts. I, I I I think this what this game does in terms of variety really puts it above um, um of Demasi. And so if even if you didn't like that, I think being introduced to it through that and then having a game that is more mechanically interesting in in we love katamari um i hope you love it i hope you give it a try and hope if you i can it. if i can somehow... it's also like a four and a half hour game five yeah i was looking at how long to be if i can somehow manage to squeeze it in this week i might try but that's gonna be a tough tough ask because yeah. yeah. yakuza final fantasy yeah. and some other stuff that we'll talk about also when you posted your collection in the in the server I was just admiring all the titles of the games. Like I, I knew the titles, but what a crazy naming system for these games. Katamari yeah. Damacy. We love Katamari. My personal favorite, beautiful Katamari. Mm-hmm. Me and my Katamari. Touch my Katamari. Fantastic yeah. names. Katamari Forever. Yeah. Possibly some of the best names of any video game franchise. <laughs> it's Me and my Katamari, Katamari so dude. Much. Bizarre. So Bizarre. Good. All right. Are you prepared mentally? for the direct discussion tucker are we getting into it actually yeah because i spent my entire day yesterday doing nothing but thinking about the fucking direct (laughs) and making content about that direct and consuming other content about that direct in preparation for having a really nice in-depth breakdown here actually i had an in-depth breakdown with abram last night so i'm doing this my second time going through everything from this direct um but this is fine this isn't his luck baby there's nothing like it yeah. Except for the other things, we, like, we are going you know. to go in depth with everything here. Oh, yeah. Every oh, announcement. Yeah. We're just going to go in order um, from the first thing shown to the last thing shown. Um, I have, I just have Wario64's tweet thread up because he is a goat in terms of just yeah. tweeting out screenshots, gives us reference what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we get into oh, specifics, oh. Tucker, overall thoughts without you know talking about any specific games, what did you think of this direct? Me personally, I think this was. A banger. I posted a video uh, on Thursday yesterday when you're watching this. I think this is one of the best directs they've done. It did everything that we had an issue with with the February direct in terms of <laughs> laying out a goddamn roadmap for the Switch. Yeah. And yeah. It, oh, shit. it it is a reassur- this was a reassuring direct. And yeah. as someone who loves Fire Emblem and loves Xenoblade, I completely understand the criticism that pretty much every direct in the Switch era has been dominant by either a Fire Emblem game or a Xenoblade game. Like, almost mm. every direct. Mm. There were two directs. The two directs we got last year, Tucker, started with a Fire Emblem game. And one of them ended with Xenoblade. It's true. It's That's true. crazy. This was yeah. the direct for the Scrimblo Bimblo Mario fuckos. And it yeah. was a damn good JRPG to see. I love, me my, I love me my Fire Emblem Xenoblade more, more than Mario overall. But yeah. to see this energy from Nintendo, especially after the Mario movie, and people were like, oh, where's the Mario tie-in game? Here's seven of them. Yeah. Here's seven Mario games for you. Yeah, it's a bizarre direct because it feels so different from the last few that we've been. I, I, the ones last year, I think, did a pretty good job of having one or two big announcements and filling us in on things that had been announced last time and releasing them at a good cadence. Um, but then this year, 
they decided to start off the year by doing a direct that did nothing. <laughs> and we had a conversation about that. And we talked about, I think on here, about how disappointing that was and how, okay, just announcing Metroid Prime Remake and Shadow Dropping, it doesn't really add that much to what we know about the Switch or, or what, what the direction of things that things are going in. And we and there was always the question, what will they do for the rest of the year? Will they do much for the rest of the year? And it's a question that we've been wrestling with in small ways almost in almost every episode of this podcast to this point. And now they just decided to answer all the questions in one direct 40 minutes. Like it's not super long. It's just a totally normal length thing. Could they have just been pack 30. a ton in there. It could, it could have been. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it was just fantastic. Uh, it, it strikes a weird balance sort of contextually uh, of a few surprises, but mostly not because fucking spoilers, as we'll get to, as or leaks well, rather. I actually have a write-in about um, that I want to get to right now, if you yeah. don't mind. But but uh, to sum it all up, great direct. I think most amount of first-party games almost ever announced in one direct, yeah. uh, and some surprises, some known quantities. Uh, I think a really good variety in terms of uh, gameplay, a, a big amount of gameplay variety. Um, not a lot of series variety, as we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, I really, really loved it. I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. If you had to give it like a score out of ten, what would you give it? Uh, I'd give it a nine out of ten. I think it's difficult to get better than that. I think that if there had been another announcement on the level of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, I'm talking about sales potential because a lot of the games that they announced here are going to sell like two million copies, and that's fucking it. Um, but uh it's still a lot of games and i like small games so having small games in one big game is a great thing for me but i think you can only get to that 10 out of 10 if it's okay we we were like in um i would say uh the the e3 2017 direct where it was like the amazing mario odyssey trailer and metroid prime 4 and kirby and yoshi and announcement of pokemon coming and mario and rabbit is like okay that's like so many big things that like you can't deny it but here it's missing like that one extra thing, but it's so close. It's like, what does it fucking matter? No, it doesn't. Not at all. I personally de- deny the 2017 one because Metroid Prime was a PNG and sure, Pokemon sure. was like I had a desk and Yoshi yeah. and Kirby didn't have titles. But <laughs> um, even not to go on a huge tangent here, February 2022, also a go to direct. We talked about this last week, I think, with uh, Switch Sports and Fire Emblem Three Hopes and Xenoblade Three and, and Mario Strikers and Live Alive. Fantastic mm-hmm. direct. So th- there are good directs, but this yeah. one really spoke to that Nintendo audience, or the, the Mario audience, I should say. Mm-hmm. If if there had been, let's say one, give me one model of soft game. Give me like some Xenoblade, give me one Xenoblade energy game from first yeah. party. And I think this would have been a 10. Um, mm-hmm. But also the first 10 minutes, which we'll get to. But we did have a write in I want to get to from No Escape, Mr. John Wick in the server. In retrospect, are you glad that Daddy Puro leaked this out, this direct, or would you have preferred to have gone in completely blind? So for context, and this is for all future potential leaking, Tucker, this entire fucking po- <laughs> direct leaked beforehand, mm-hmm. and I did videos about it on my channel. I was very uh, kind of kind of bullish on believing this. I, I really looked into this guy's account, yeah, and it seemed very r- real to me. The things that are in this direct, are, it, it is almost like fan fiction, some of the stuff we saw, yeah. but his account was so reliable. This dude leaked Grievard for Pokemon. He leaked some Yakuza games last year. He leaked the announcement timing of everybody want to switch. He leaked Samba de Amigo. He leaked Sonic Superstars. Just in text, just saying the names of these things. But when you do all these things and add up all that, this is this is the m- most notorious leaker of all time at this point, I would think, at mm. least in terms of Nintendo. There's never yeah. been a direct leak like this. The only thing I can think is in 2015, the April Fool's Direct sucker if you remember yeah. that actually had one of those leaks where it was like a camera and like a text document and it was real yeah. um this is the only thing that comes close to it and if this guy sticks around i mean you you can take his word for fact every single yeah. game he teased was here mm-hmm. so would you have rather gone in blind or are you okay with him doing this uh and i absolutely would have rather gone in blind I, I think that so many of the things were oh yep there it is and that means that other thing is real kind of took away a lot of the like special moments of it that that could have been there um especially because uh, this is different from some other leaks i mean we hear rumors of okay 2d metroid and 3d mario collection or it was 2d metroid and paper mario are coming and that was like 18 months in advance and it was just general sort of okay 
series might be coming. We don't know if this is confirmed or whatever. Those I'm more okay with because they are so ethereal and they spark conversation sort of in the long term. But I think this is one of my least favorite leaks because it was hyper specific if you knew how to read it. And it was one day in advance or, or like 48 hours in advance. And so that just means that if this guy could have held off from internet cloud for two days, our minds would have been blown six times Sunday with, with a couple of these reveals. If we didn't know or had no indication that Detective Pikachu t Returns would be coming or Super Mario RPG would be getting a remake, these would have been some of the craziest announcements of all time. And they still are. But I think they lose some of that spark when you're like, oh, yep, that's a thing I've been thinking about for the last 48 hours and everyone's been talking about because this guy that is reputable said it would be coming. Okay, yep, it's a thing. Um, I put a lot of stock in that first reveal being mega important to my memory of a game. Uh, and leaks ruin that. Um, I, I'm not the most, like, okay, spoiler, talk about things if you want, whatever. But uh, this was so pervasive and unavoidable that I think it took, I think it took some of the wind out of the sails of this direct. Sure. For me, I don't think it really hurt the direct for me overall, but I don't think what you're saying with, like, like Nate Drake on Family Boards has been leaking and teasing F-Zero for, like, fucking two yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Metroid Prime Trilogy, Metroid Prime Remake. Yeah. These are things that we hear about yeah. for months, and then when it actually happens, everybody went to Switch, and it's like, oh, that actually was real, okay. Yeah, exactly, because it's been so long, you didn't yeah. know if it was necessarily real or not. This happening right before um, is, as, as someone who covers Nintendo like this and really enjoys being part of the community, it's hype in the moment. It is like, oh my god, is this guy real? Is this guy fake? But then, yeah, like you said, that moment where it, you, you see the Titanic Pikachu, you see it's October 6th, you're just like, okay well mm. we're about to see mario RPG. we're about to see 2d mario i think in this instance it was less um of an issue for me because my two biggest issues or my two biggest questions were what does mario rpg look like what does 2d mario look like and i didn't get that from his leaks 2d mario of course, of 2d course. mario is one of those things that we, we had been hearing about yeah mario rpg is not but still just seeing what they actually look like in practice was almost as exciting as the announcement itself sure yeah no absolutely in this specific instance <laughs> any yeah. like that and that's just because like i was talking about those caleb mario's style has been so sterile for the past two decades mm -hmm. so actually getting new art styles is a big deal yeah. Um, yeah but if this had been like oh xenoblade 4 it'd be like well fuck man that would have been one of the biggest pop-ups of all time for me mm -hmm. it doesn't well, matter xenoblade what xenoblade looks like if Fire Emblem Engage was leaked there actually xenoblade 3, been quite a few xenoblade games. 3 wasn't leaked it was rumored it was, ru it was, it, it was heavily it rumored. was uh, the the composer of the game said he was working on a, a new Xenoblade game. Sure, it was yeah, it was yeah. very obvious based on Monolith Soft timing, but it wasn't leaked. Fire Emblem Games okay, was sure, also sure. leaked. Um, it was very much leaked. We yeah. saw the screenshot of fucking oh god, what's the main Alir. character's name? Alir. Alir, yeah, Alir. Yeah. We saw that screenshot of them, like <laughs> like over a year in advance, and people were like this it looks pretty real, but I hope it's fake because this, this fucking character looks stupid. And then it was real. And did anyone really care? I don't know. But yeah, leaks are leaks are weird to me because I, as I said, I like the long-term ones that spark conversation. And so because it takes so long, you almost forget. And then when you're reminded, you're like, oh my God, that was real. That's your reaction in the moment. I think that the, oh, okay, it's real, is was my feeling mostly yesterday. It's like, oh, Super Mario RPG. And then as soon as Super Mario RPG was revealed, you can see it in our, in our reaction on Backlog Banter. Abram says, that means we're getting 2D Mario. And so that means we're taken out of the moment for Super Mario RPG. That means that we're, we are knowing what to expect, what's coming down the pipeline, rather than being surprised at the end. There is, I mean, we're hardcore. We're into this. Like, it's going to happen. And, yeah. like, I don't, it's, I, I don't care that much. But I do think it was ultimately a negative thing for me because... Especially because it was so close. Again, like two days. Just, just hold out. Just don't say anything. And yeah. then we would have had like more uh, significantly more surprises in this direct. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll we'll talk about those specific announcements when we get to them. But Mario RPG remake. I, I keep I keep using this term, and I think it is accurate. That is 2015 fan fiction shit. That is Absolutely. like Nintendo fan wet dream, like yeah. oh my god, Chrono Trigger tier, like what Metroid Prime yeah. Four, like what is happening? Metroid Dr Metroid Five, Metroid Dread happening. Yeah, we actually have gotten uh, Pikmin Four actually coming out. The, there actually are the Switch has numerous... been the console of dreams. It has, it has, and uh, also Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I mean, that's a fucking 
fan fiction ass name like donkey kong fire and ice or like legend legend of zelda darkness uh, of the kingdom yeah exactly <laughs> people like, always use like people sh- shadow, shadows of the realm they always use like weird yeah. words that aren't gonna be Wonder- used in zelda bad name we'll, we'll talk about mario we'll talk about mario okay okay but let's just go ahead and get into it we do have a lot of write-ins to incorporate with each uh thing Perfect. here from the server and from the community post on youtube but starting off tucker we kind of alluded to this the first 10 minutes of this direct were um <laughs> certainly a choice and i i kind of have a, a theory here so pokemon ever since uh covid happened in 2020 has been pretty much only doing their own things called pokemon presents not pokemon directs they are technically different in which they can show mobile games they can show off tcg stuff that kind of thing right yeah um i think maybe they had some sort of deal with nintendo where we were like hey we'll let you show off detective pikachu 2 which we'll get to but we're going to open this direct with our pokemon dlc because this mm. is the weirdest and, and flattest opening to any nintendo direct i think ever at least in terms yeah. of like the modern switch era because Listen, if it was, like, a grand old trailer for Scarlet and Violet uh, Area Zero DLC, that'd be one thing. There was no new information here. No. None of these Pokemon designs were new. Uh, they revealed these back in February. There's no yep. release date. Yeah. It's all just, we're seeing it in-game for the first time, which is cool. The game still looks like shit. But, <laughs> but it's just a really weird opening, and it kind of set the tone very quickly for the, like I said, these first 10 minutes of this Direct. Yeah. Not good. No. So, but what do you think of this this opening with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? <laughs> It's actually it's interesting. You mentioned that uh, Pokemon's been doing sort of its own thing since 2020, but frankly, I think it it extends even farther back than that. Uh, Pokemon or Nintendo Directs have had occasional minor Pokemon things, but they're more so recapping things that were announced in previously announced uh, Pokemon Presents. It's them saying, "Hey, Pokemon Let's Go is coming, and Mew is in the Pokemon Plus. Isn't that kind of cute? Hey, don't forget, Pokemon Tournament DX is coming out later this year." That's usually what the Pokemon inclusion is here. So subverting that and having the good parts of a Pokemon Presents be put into a Direct, sure. Because that just means we don't have to... I mean, it would kind of be fun, but don't have to like, get back together next week and watch a 15-minute Pokemon Presents in which the only real reveal is Detective Pikachu 2 and a lame-ass trailer for the DLC. And then otherwise, it's fucking Cafe Remix and Unite and Masters EX and fucking Pokemon Go and all that. Um I think this was a positive thing overall because it was incorporated and it was unique and it and it did feel different from what they've done before. But you're right. What a wet fart of a way to fucking start a direct. Because objectively, this is a big deal. Most people did not see the DLC announcement because it was in a Pokemon Presents. Less people watch those than, than yeah. that people do Nintendo Directs. Uh, this was mildly substantial in terms of it was a reasonably long trailer there was a lot of variety in characters and locations and pokemon shown but it also for the hardcore fans and as an opening has no energy i mean it was a pretty slow trailer the music was just like you know you know kind of plodding along there's no reveal at the end of uh, an exciting new legendary that we didn't know about before that really gets us our, our fucking gears turning up oh my god i can't believe they're doing this no release date for even the first one is bizarre and you're right like the, the new information was like sign on today and get fucking 10 nuggets and some rare candies and friend ball <laughs> like that yeah, that was the real very weird very weird this, other than reminding people that this is coming um i i agree i thought it was a bad way to open the direct and it, it's apparent in the reaction video that i uploaded yesterday i was like "Ooh, this is not a good sign no, and, yeah. and it set my expectations very low which was, I guess, maybe good because then those were easily superseded. Yeah. Like ten minutes later, as you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, I live streamed it uh, yesterday morning, and <laughs> what a fucking weird opening, dude. I was immediately like, oh god, because in what world do you have all these crazy Mario announcements and not open with one of them? So I was like, oh, yeah. he's fake. I, there was that moment where I was like, oh, maybe yeah, Pure yeah, wasn't sure. real. So. Um, very weird opening to the direct, but we'll talk about. It could more. have easily, if the direct had continued in that direction, it could have easily been, okay, we're showing you Splatoon DLC, we're showing you uh, Pokemon DLC, we're showing you Mario Kart, and I don't know, maybe a port, and then it's the fucking just this exact same thing as last time. It's like okay, yeah. whatever. But then they didn't like it was just it was just a section, which is so weird. Yeah, this first ten minutes. Yeah, well, let's keep going through it. We'll talk more about Pokemon in a minute here. Uh, starting with our first headline, we got another look at Sonic Superstars. Uh, this is our first 
Switch gameplay, I believe, looks pretty crusty. But I'm actually I'm I'm still interested in this game. I think it looks pretty good. I'll, I'll be playing yeah. it on P- PlayStation Five, but kind of you um, know Sonic the yeah, Hedgehog episode four kind of vibes. But you know, for sure, totally, totally fucking <laughs> <Jack up. laughs> Um, no release date still. I thought maybe that would be here. There is actually um. We are recording this on June 22nd. We're posting it on June 23rd. Oh, there is a Sonic tomorrow. Central. There is a Sonic Central yeah. happening tomorrow. So maybe we'll get the release date there, I'd imagine, or something Yeah. Else. I mean, what other information do they have? Yeah, what else could they possibly... I mean, it's a fucking 2D Sonic game. What do you need to do? Sonic Central's are, <laughs> I think, the, worst. the weirdest They're the worst, bro. They're always bad, but they're always weird. Remember when they were like... And we've got shoes and jewelry and fucking like temporary tattoos and like we mailed your mom a like Sonic plushie. It's like, what, what are you talking? Oh, huh? What, were you what, around? What are you doing? Were you around in 2016 when they did the the like live stream to announce Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces? Or at the uh, time, Project no, Sonic I knew that was actually 2017. I knew that was called? at uh, uh, South by Southwest. Um, but no, I I don't know. That don't, was I, I, I've looked back at it. Um, and. Revealing Sonic Mania in that way is very interesting, and like people get very excited in the crowd. Um, it was like a two hour because they live streamed it, so it was like a two hour rave of just people partying, <laughs> and then it's like here's bizarre. two Sonic games. Yeah, but also two Sonic games, and yeah, I know maybe you like Forces, but one of them was bad, and one of them was maybe the best. Let's Sonic not, okay, game, let's so. just set the record clear here. I don't want to become this person. I think I'm talking about. Uh, exceeding expectations because they were so on the floor. I think Sonic yeah. Mania or Sonic Forces is okay. I think it's like, yeah, it's like a six. <laughs> but it, like sure. because my expectations were so damn low, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this, oh, this, this, this is just the same quality as every other 3D Sonic game. Yeah, but uh, I'm interested to see what happens at the Sonic Central. I don't expect anything out of it. My expectations could not be lower. I don't even think that. we're gonna get a date. No, because it's like it could have been here two days apart. Bizarre. Yeah, I could have been. Here. Um, but I am excited for the future of Sonic. I think. We'll both be having this. superstars show up consistently in things shows a confidence uh, that is very exciting. And because I love Frontier so much, it's like, okay, now we've got really interesting 3D and really interesting 2D Sonic. So uh, I, I'm i excited for superstars, but I'm excited for next year Sonic news <laughs> because we might start getting hints of what's to come next for 3D Sonic. Maybe. They still have Frontier's DLC to do, though. That's true. But isn't that like really soon bro sonic frontiers took five years to come out it's gonna be a while man they just just do it again just freeze the map i'll, I'll fucking play it again bro you're not gonna be hearing about a 3d sonic until like 2028 <laughs> uh but following sonic superstars and it just the, the pacing and the tone is just still so down they well, announced the pacing this... for that sonic thing is 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 weird because there's no actual information actually quite a bit like what we did with uh, what we're saying about pokemon is this was just a trailer with the information that we were already familiar with. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's yeah. This, a big thing. This but... direct feels like it's made for people that don't go on Twitter or look at any yeah. other gaming information, yeah. which is yeah. it's fair, I guess, because like, like once again, with the, the Pokemon DLC, if you didn't watch the Pokemon Presents, which a lot of people don't, maybe you didn't know about that. Yeah. Um, because that was announced after the February Direct. But um, yeah, we got the announcement of this new free-to-play farming adventure sim Ooh. called Palia. <laughs> and... Tucker, there was definitely vibes of Farming Direct 2.0 here in this yeah. Direct, because there was like three other farming games, but mm-hmm. this does nothing for me. I don't think this looks interesting. Kind of yeah. has like the Fortnite art style, but... It does. My, I, I said Fortnite, wow. And I'm like, this is bizarre. Yeah. And I, I don't think it looks good. I don't think anyone's going to play it. No. Whatever. No. no this is a very uh like Summer Game Fest-ass announcement of a game that looks like other games that no one will ever fucking play. Yeah. After that, they showed a trailer for, once again, instead of Weird One, getting that information out there, I guess, Persona 5 Tactica, with some mm. new footage in there, I believe. Um, November 17th, sorry, that's a bad day for Persona 5 Tactica now, mm. as we know, but um, nothing much to say here. Now, we did have a write-in, and this is one of the biggest talking points with this direct for a lot of people, or at least Atlas fans. Uh, Alicia Tried wrote in, and said, does the lack of Persona 3 Reload hint to a possible Switch upgrade next year? And then Omega also said, is there any hope for Persona 3? So we're going to save the Switch upgrade talk, I think, for a little bit later, because we are going to talk about that. Persona 3 Reload, though, I think... I would fucking hope. <laughs> it doesn't... Dude, this makes no sense. I don't know what Atlas is doing. It Objectively, it defies all logic to not have this game be on but Switch. But also defies their logic because i mean we didn't talk about this in the stuff outside of the direct but 
uh, they uploaded a video that indicated that it was coming to Switch. That was, to be fair, that was just the, the description, and they clearly sure. copied and pasted it from Tactica. Oh, was, okay, is the, okay. Is the assumption. But we had seen a bunch, a bunch of retailer listings on Play Asia and, and yeah. the game in the UK, so maybe Persona 3 is still coming, but it's certainly not coming at the same time as other platforms if it does, mm. which is just possibly one of the biggest L's Alice can ever... Dude, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's a PS2 game. Yeah, no, <laughs> it actually makes it actually makes no sense. I don't care if it comes to Switch really, because I'm gonna play it on PS5 if I play it. But what? How? I did. It's a turn-based JRPG with its primary audience in Japan, and yeah. the Switch is the it, only handheld uh, console. And Persona Five Royal, when it came to all these new platforms, sold best on Switch. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. And, and it's not also not like okay, this is the first Persona game coming to Switch, so they gotta like work with the hardware and like learn how to use the series on there. It's like no. This will be this will be the sixth Persona game on Switch when it comes, and so like they've got the engine. Yeah, we know it works. I believe works this well. game specifically runs on Unreal Four. Sure. Which, but, if anything, should help it. Yeah, we know that Unreal Four works on Pikmin Switch. Four. Unreal Pikmin Four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what the fuck? Ah, uh, goddamn it, Atlas. Yeah, that I, I don't know anymore. I, I would say maybe later. Um, just on, on still on OG Switch, but maybe just later next year. Or I, I think I made the idea last uh, last episode that maybe they'll do like a uh, Persona Three re reload where they fix all the stuff that people are already complaining about with this game. I would not be surprised. <laughs> reload Royal. God. Next up, we saw a game called Myth Force coming out in 2023 from Aspire and Beam Dog. This looked interesting. Not a game I'll play, but kind of this first person magic esque game with like this really cartoony comic book art style. Yeah. Kind of vibe going on. Did this do anything for you? No. Forgot no. about it. Is it even is it multiplayer or is it like saying I can't even tell what's going on? I think so. I think it, it has to be. I mean they, the trailer with like all those characters around you get yeah. definitely gets big multiplayer vibes. Could be cool. Probably not. It reminds me of um you remember Morphe's Law back in like twenty eighteen? I can't believe I fucking played that game. I wanted Even to when play I it. bought that game together. This wasn't good. It wasn't that good. I had an interesting idea. Um but damn. That's a that's a pull, bow. That's a crazy fucking pull. Morphe's Law, bro. Take me back. Simpler times in my life. Then we get to our final weird thing before it gets good, I think. The next Splatoon 3 Splatfest was announced. Vanilla, strawberry, mint chip are your options for your favorite ice cream. <laughs> July 14th through the 16th, they also announced some new challenge mode, which I will never play, probably. Tucker, they didn't even mention the DLC. The side mm -hmm. order DLC. And we'll be talking... To we're going to be dissecting this direct for weeks and all the announcements and, and what this yeah. means for the future of the Switch. But, and so we'll have a full conversation about this at some point. This not having, or sorry, this DLC not even being mentioned, I think is the biggest confirmation of a September Direct uh, of all time. Mm -hmm. We are absolutely getting a September Direct where that DLC is shown, Shadow Drop, maybe yeah. it's coming out a few weeks or something. Because not uh -huh. even mentioning the DLC is so weird because they mentioned it in February. Yeah. It's DLC. So why even mention this Splatfest? Very weird. Very weird to have this. Yeah, because they also don't usually do this for Splatfests, or at least not Un unless they have something else to say, like oh, there's a new new content coming, new new outfits, new weapons. Yeah, that then they'll tie in the Splatfest with it, but never yeah. just the Splat. Which to be fair, I guess they have the new challenges. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and also weird. just goes to show how strangely borked the post launch support is for Splatoon Three. Like, what are you doing? It's like, it's horrible. What? You should be showing off a whole new slate of, of outfits and and weapons and stuff here. Like that, that's what Splatoon is. That's what you guys been doing for the entire history of the series until now. And now you're just like, hey, another Splatfest is coming, which frankly doesn't really get people that excited. They severely uh, messed up with this game. I think. Yeah. I Splatoon. I mean, we've talked about this before, or at least I have in other videos. At least Splatoon one and Splatoon two, but specifically Splatoon one during that Wii U very dry life. Uh, cycle that console had uh, getting something every week was that was everything i played splatoon yeah. one basically its entire life i maybe took uh, maybe a month or two off here and there but mm. i have no drive to go back to splatoon 3 i've missed so much stuff now with the seasons i just I, stop don't do seasons i i don't know what they were thinking with this game um because it, it sucks it's, it's the, easily the best splatoon game <laughs> but yeah. they just didn't yeah. do the content rollout right yeah so, i think that it's it'll be a game to sort of an interesting game to sort of track once its life cycle is nearing its end um, because I do think that with the side order content, because they've only been upping their game in terms of single player and in creativity, and then uh, going from Splatoon 2 single player to Octo Expansion to Splatoon 3 single player to this, 
I think it could add a su substantial amount of intrigue. And there's also the possibility that they sort of get back on track because they have some extra maps and weapons and stuff sort of in the bank. But um, I think by the end of it, we'll be happy with it. But it's just frustrating in the moment because Splatoon is sold on having consistent support. And they're just not doing it this time for whatever godforsaken reason. <laughs> When they had the Splatoon Direct last year, they said how long this game would be getting updates. Did they say through the end of 2023 or the end of... They said end of 2024. They said 2024. Okay. So There's no shot it would only be a little over one year. Yeah, so it's it's going until probably September 2024, I'd imagine. Yeah. Once again, deconfirming potential Switch 2. Sorry, guys. Mm. I can't the fucking react. The reaction to this Direct would be like, oh, there's, there's nothing for Switch. This must mean Switch 2 is coming out. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You people are delusional. Yeah. That's as we'll crazy. get into, because we have Goaty 2023 next up, Tucker. Detective Pikachu Returns. <laughs> October 6th, releasing, of course, developed by Creatures, Inc. Tucker, this... Listen, Redfall? Redfall is one thing. This may be the worst-looking game on the Switch. Yeah. I, yeah. I cannot believe... It looks like... It looks like a tech demo. There's no shadows. It's all really flat. The models look horrible. They're fucking copywriting me for just showing it in my my videos. I don't know if you got yeah. the copyright truck for yeah, that. I, I must have. Ve yeah. Very annoying in that aspect. But this Wait, game, why is that copyright strike worthy? I don't know. Both my reactions got taken or got striked for having Pokemon or Detective Pikachu in it. Also, the Scarlet and Violet. So I, I guess Pokemon Company is just on some something right now. But they usually are. But not. I have not had issue with them before. But anyway, uh, Detective Pikachu returns. I am going to play Detective Pikachu before uh, this comes out now on 3DS. You were playing oh, a I'm little a bit there. Profit. Yeah. I'm a fucking profit. I, but I, I have to say, I think this game looks very bad. <laughs> I think it looks awful. and Like, unaccept like unacceptably so. Like, Scarlet and Violet, I think, is bad. This is yeah. on some new next level shit. I was, I was talking to my friend, uh, my roommate, actually. And I'll say it, it looks like a Wii game. And he was like, no, it doesn't. And then I posted a screenshot of Poke Park for Wii. Poke Park for Wii unironically looks better graphically. There is more detail in the fucking models. Yeah. It's insane. It's crazy. And I think what is most disappointing about that is, again, I've been playing Detective Pikachu. I haven't played in a lot, eh, like a week now, but that is one of the most impressive 3DS games. I yep. mean, it's got good animation. It's got uh, like, like facial animation and, and solid lip sync. and you know, it's it's got reasonably good textures and sort of a pastel art style, and now it's just flat, and the lighting engine is weird, and it's like using like the models from fucking like Legends Arceus, and it's like, what, what are you doing? And also, I think really the reason why this wasn't a pop, even though it was very interesting that this game we did we basically thought was dead is actually coming very soon, uh, is that we don't even know what the game is like. Like they just showed environments and cutscenes, but we didn't see what what you're going to be walking around, how you're going to be interacting pe with people, what kind of um, difference in the detective puzzle solving will be in a, in a sequel to this. It was, there wasn't even like a clear direction of what the story is going to be. It's just well, literally detective Pikachu is returning. Well, that's, and I, I have a, a game. I have a question for you. Cause you've played uh, a decent amount of the 3ds game. Obviously we both yeah. in the movie. Yeah. A little over half. Is this even genuine, genuine question. Is this a sequel? Because I don't yeah, know. I think so. Yeah. When because when they announced it, they just said Detective Pikachu was coming to Switch, like no, when they yeah. when they announced the game in 2019. So, well, well, yeah, they did say that. Um, but no, I think this has to be a sequel. A because there's Gen Eight Pokemon sure. in it. Sure. Uh, you, you see yourself a fucking Milkery and yeah, Applin is on the yeah. thing, and yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Um, so the, by that metric, but also, uh, Tim and Pikachu recognize Mewtwo. Uh, and okay. They I've only watched the trailer a little bit. Only saw you by the end of uh, the first okay. game. Uh, so spoilers, man. Motherfucker, you watch the movie. It's like the exact same. <laughs> it is the same plot. Yeah, um, but this is a bizarre announcement and kind of exciting, frankly. Well, because... we were we were excited at the prospect of a new Pokemon spinoff this year after that yeah. Pokemon Presents was horrible. So yeah. we were right in that we were still going to get one. Mm -hmm. But um, but for me, it was really the idea that this game i thought it wasn't gonna happen i mean i i've kept it on my list of upcoming games it's like okay they said this but there's been literally zero information about it for five years um and the fact that they're just like yeah here it is in a sort of mediocre ass trailer and it's coming out in a couple months and it looks bad is like terrible for this game but it's just funny it's just bizarre <laughs> yeah i don't really know who this game is for to be honest it just... no 
I don't think the Tekken Pikachu lit the world on fire on 3DS though. To be fair, it came out in 2018, so yeah, that was a that wasn't gonna work. It, mm-hmm. It's just it, the, the history of the the series is so funny because the Tekken Pikachu one on 3DS also had a troubled development. Yep, um, and, and, now, that and game, how and how it's happened again. Yeah, and, and in this case, it looks just actually terrible. So yeah. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna play the 3DS game before this yeah, and, yeah. and get and get get ready for Detective Pikachu. Maybe do like a Detective Pikachu spoiler cast. Get really into yes, the roots will. of the, the the story of Detective Pikachu. But October 6, 2023, that is our uh, next game after Pikmin 4. And there's actually nothing in between, which I think is interesting and we yeah. will talk about with a write-in. But this is Tucker where the direct just kind of went crazy. Nintendo the the pacing of directs is weird. It went normally. Normally they do a big announcement in the in the beginning. We get like yeah. a deep dive announcement in the you know like middle, maybe another announcement in there as well, and then a big ending. Mm-hmm. Outside of Mario Wonder, which we'll get to, all of the big announcements were just lumped in the middle, <laughs> just all yeah. of them at once. So starting off, we got uh, a a new trailer, sorry, a new announcement in the form of Super Mario RPG coming November seventeenth. Sorry, Persona Five Tactica, Tucker. This looks so damn good Wait, i have... what do you mean persona 5 tactica that's gonna sell better than this will not on switch i don't think so i don't think so or at least it'll be comparable i don't like, think i don't, I don't know really... I, I don't think it'll even be close actually this will sell three or three to five billion copies yeah but will that not i mean i don't know i don't think persona 5 strikers did that well okay i have no fucking clue yeah like, i Sorry, it's a continue. tactics. It's a tactics game, Tucker. You think Persona Five Tactics is gonna do as well as? I mean, to be fair, both are probably pretty no, modest no. overall. But I think you're insane. Um, yeah. Okay. But right. this this game looks goddamn incredible. I've never played Mario RPG. I, I recognize the music though immediately. Really great trailer. I love this style and talking about like oh Mario evolving and getting new kind of themes for its games. This is the first 3D Mario game with 3D models that looks different that we've ever gotten ever. In terms of like the sterile Mario, mm. like you know, you know what I mean. Like yeah, like yeah. Okay, I guess like you go back to like Double Dash, and that's weird in Mario sixty four. But in terms of like the modern era, we've never gotten a different looking three D uh, models Mario game, and I think it looks fantastic. Kind of has like Link's Awakening energy. Just, uh, what, what, what did Abram say? A big big game for short short guys or something? No, yeah, this is a game for short kings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think this looks really cool because it is recreating the visual style the game was going for but didn't have the hardware to produce um and i've seen some people a little bit disappointed in it saying it looks generic but i do think that artistically it is building on what came before in a a a modernized and uh and in cleaned up way but i think respectful of that original art style that was using simulated 3d models through its super nintendo sprite art um a game that People like the way that game looks. I've never thought it was like fantastic. I'm like, oh, okay, this is kind of like a cute thing. But um, seeing it polished up definitely gives this game a look that n- not many, ga- basically, no other games do. <laughs> I mean, not many games did what Super Mario RPG was doing during the Super Nintendo. And then no games have really tried to recreate that, but with modern 3D models and lighting engine and stuff. And so, yeah, this, this game looks awesome. And also, I mean, those animated cutscenes are top notch i mean yeah. you could actually we actually now now bell let's 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 do a little groundwork here do we know who's making this no and i think that's interesting to talk about because there's a couple yeah. other games we don't know who's making the uh, no, making true. it uh in fact they're, they're all three next to each other but so, so we'll get to that but <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think mario rpg remake if i had to guess i don't think square enix is involved honestly obviously yeah. they're, they're gonna license it out because they own a lot of the characters like gino and mallow i'm willing to bet it is I'm going to say it's a Grezzo. I think Grezzo is probably doing this. Sure. They they are kind of like Nintendo's blue point in a way. They do yeah, no, the, the, Zelda, the Zelda remakes. They did Metopia. That was in 2021. Mm-hmm. I think they are also probably doing another game that got announced in this, but that is much smaller and in scope. So I think this is probably the big remake they've been working on. Um, and I could be completely wrong. It, it could be some other studio we don't even know about. It could be Square Enix. It could be... Um, I saw some people saying Monolith Soft might be involved with this. I don't know about that, but... Why? It could, I don't RPG? know. Maybe just because Monolith Soft does everything for Nintendo. Sure, but yeah. I, I, I'm I'm gonna they don't say actually Grezzo. help with remakes though. They've outside never, outside of their own. Ever... Outside of their own. Well, yeah. True, obviously, obviously, but yeah, yeah, no, I don't. I that people are pulling that completely out of their ass. Monolith yeah. Soft is not involved in this. I will the say only the only the, the only company that we like have a track record with that would make sense is Grezzo. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But uh, unless I'm... it's Square. 
it, it could be it could be i don't know who at square like yeah i don't know I don't, I don't think so um but i think this looks fantastic definitely the second biggest announcement for me in this direct and mm. i'm super super excited for it because i think it just looks really good and like i said yeah. it's it's that dream announcement that is yeah crazy yeah this is people's people have been asking this for this for years uh Smash speculation next next game gonna be oh, actually oh, insufferable. Oh. I really hope we get Mallow and not Gino though. Sure, because Mallow's like, a better character. I like Mallow more. Yeah, I yeah, like Mallow. Mallow's a better design. Then it got weird, Tucker. Koizumi it got, and uh, it got maybe the uh, weirdest I've seen in a Nintendo Direct in a long goddamn. What, what's his name? The other guy, ha Takahashi. Takahashi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were just like, so Mario's getting a game. This character is also getting a game. Let's take a little peek. And they showed us like 10 seconds of this new Peach game. Out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I had this moment of like, oh, is this the 2D Mario game that leaked? No, this is a separate. Lots of people did actually. Yeah, yeah. For, for good reason. Um, This is a new game starring Peach. We didn't, we haven't had one of these since uh, Super Princess Peach on the DS, which I will be playing soon. I actually bought a copy on eBay last night. Yeah. Of course. Oh, you did? How much I was did. it? I got a cartridge only for 40. I actually have a case in the garage somewhere. It's an expensive. It's you an expensive a, game. You have a Super Princess Peach case. Yeah, I found it at Goodwill. Oh, <laughs> like that's fine. Ago. Okay, sure. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll, be piecing the, I'll be piecing those together. But it's an expensive yeah. game, complete. But uh, this new Princess Peach game, what do you think coming out twenty twenty four? Once again, don't know the developer. I, I would be happy to talk about that too. But yeah. I think it looks cool. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on. She's on like a stage play, mm -hmm. and it's it's it is a three D environment, but she's moving in like a two D space, for the most part. Um. Oh no! I, I think I think it's kind of just like a little three D area because I mean she like goes 3D, up and I like guess, attacks. I guess I guess three D world kind of style would be a good good way to. to sure. Say. Well, I think the reason I would say I disagree is because I think it is just this area is constricted. Like sure. it's physically not very big because it's a stage. Um, but I think there's going to be some sort of three D game. I mean, obviously we see her moving in three D space. This is. I think this is the weirdest announcement because this is also the least leaked thing. I mean, this was just totally out of nowhere. It, there's no precedent for them doing this other than Super Princess Peach, which felt like a one-off. Um, this is nothing like that in, in any way other than a character. Um, and it was also, I think, maybe one of the lamest ways to ever announce a game. I think, I think this was a bad way to announce this game. And I think that if it had been in a more traditional trailer, a more traditional... Uh, way to reveal a game it, being a headline a little bit of fanfare uh, give us slightly more information about it i think that all the questions that this raises are both exciting because it's so out of left field and like that's something that's really cool to do from nintendo but it also i think they're not questions that are like exciting to really wonder about like who's making the game what's the gameplay style what's what is it going to be called like these are basic things that don't like increase me of like speculating i'm like okay we'll get more information later so why didn't they just wait to reveal it when they had the actual information about the game it is a tease in the barest sense and i think it's just it kind of kneecaps the excitement that this game's reveal could possibly have had i agree it was a weird announcement though i, I do think it's maybe Maybe a little hypocritical since you love the 2017 showcase so much, in which Kirby and Yoshi mm. were shown with no title or no release date. Yoshi came out no, two years true. after that. To be fair, but those games have more gameplay. Substantial gameplay, yeah. But pretty similar. Those games should not yeah. have been announced when they were. Mm. Um, it, it is weird, and I I think this goes into maybe the one potential like point I'll give for the Switch Two believers. Yeah. This do, this this section of the direct felt like a 2017 3ds era um yeah, like showcase yeah. where they're just like hey guys there's games coming out do not worry yeah. um however i think this is a substantial game i think this will be a, a yeah, big absolutely. deal i'm gonna put my money down on next level games making this i think they are working mm -hmm. on this i think this mm -hmm. is their next game after mario strikers and of course they did luigi's mansion um this kind of looks like their style i've seen a lot of people saying intelligent systems i don't think so i think they're probably making paper mario still um but i, I think it looks good yeah it is it is just a weird announcement this is another point for a September Direct, I think. I think this is probably oh, spring next year, so we'll get that title. We'll get a full trailer. Yeah. It just feels weird because I don't think this Direct needed it. No, exactly. And that's why I think that it, it there's just, like, no benefits to doing it this way. Like, okay, sure, it's not actively harmful to this game. And it, there is the positive of, okay, we know a little bit of the 2024 roadmap, but it didn't need to happen because there were plenty of other announcements in, in this Direct. I mean, 
if if they didn't show off the Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon remake that which we'll get to and the P- Princess Peach game, would anyone have noticed? We wouldn't care. We wouldn't know these hadn't been rumored. And so then, when they show up at the next direct, that is something for that direct to have unique. It gives those games a little more substantial information. It gives them a a more confident opening, like oh, this is happening, and they're excited about this. That's why they're giving us this full trailer and, like, some information. But no, it's just like, here is a thing that's happening. It's very, we're working on a Mario Kart game for Wii U energy, which I think is just lame. I, I, I think it was a lame way to announce these games, but whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking this, but um, I'm excited for the game. I just think this is was a bad way to do it. Sure, I, I don't think it's quite like oh we're making a Mario Kart game because no one would have expected a Peach game to be. Of course, announced. that's true. That's true. Um, but it, it goes to what I was saying though. I, I really do think because yeah, these could have been safe for September, both of these announcements, and that would have been fine. But I think they did want to tell people, hey, there are games coming out in twenty twenty four. I yeah. think almost to show people like guys, you're stuck in with the Switch for a while. Yeah, um, yeah, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways because I think if these weren't there, there would have been no twenty twenty four games except for sure. that that one game from the Sonic Mania team. So yeah. This was just a show like, hey, we, we're still we're still thinking about you because Nintendo for the past three or four years, ever since COVID, especially they do not announce games this early. I mean, this Peach game's a yeah. year out. That's mm-hmm. fucking weird. They don't they don't do that. So very weird. I'm, I'm very excited to see more of it. I, I think this could be great, especially if it is next level or if it is the intelligence systems. I'm not sure what you think, um, but I have no I'm, I'm very clue. intrigued. Yeah. The, the crazy thing about like trying to speculate what team is making this is there's no track record for it. Like, it seems to be a unique style of gameplay, and obviously in a unique quote-unquote franchise, the fucking Peach series, I guess. It doesn't, those games don't happen. Yeah. It's happened once. Well, that's it's why, not like there's a track record for any of it. That's why I, I think, A, it kind of just looks like a next-level game, though that, that doesn't really mean anything because sure. they have so much style. But also, they yeah. are known for just doing a bunch of stuff. They're like, yeah. they're just, you know... Swiss Army knife of Nintendo kind of they can just mm. they do Luigi's Mansion they do a sports game fuck it punch out you know yeah, yeah, yeah so I'm gonna assume it's them but maybe not it could even be done internally maybe I mean that's possible probably not sure. but I mean that would be really interesting yeah that'd be bizarre this is your 3D Mario game this is what they're making they're not making a fucking <laughs> can you imagine I mean if if this is what the 3D no the 3D Mario team is rumored to be working on a 2D Donkey Kong platform that is, there's and, no chance that's true I promise and, you there's no and if another part. internal team <laughs> is working on a 3D Peach game. They're they at some point in like 2019 or 2020, they must have been like, "All right, we're just we're fucking things left left ways and sideways and upwards." Like you're trying this, you're trying that. We're doing. They want to like get their devs shit. more experience or something. There, are, there interesting. There are two more things I want to say. Uh, one, you mentioned that you think this area is just constrained. I am willing to bet the entire game will be kind of like this, okay. and they, okay, these sure. these small. It will be yeah, like you said, it's it's 3D, but smaller spaces i think it'll be a simple game it's not going to be like these big 3d like open areas um and the other thing just one last thing about the potential like reasoning for this maybe they just wanted to fucking stuff mario fans to the brim maybe Mm. they were just like let's just show them everything let's just show them our full hand i don't know why they would do that um people have been very critical of like oh where's mario been for the past couple years which i think is actually a pretty fair criticism because there has not been much in terms of new mario stuff um but this is exciting what is not exciting at least for mm-hmm. me. Although I, I'm, I'm being a little shithead. I'm excited for this. I will buy it and play it because I, I yeah. do just love this franchise. Uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon coming to Switch in 2024. This does not look like a very good port. They just th- slapped the <laughs> the bottom screen in the top right, called it a day. Slightly, oh, did they? Wait, slightly, whoa. Sl- is that there? Yeah, it's just the, it's just the bottom screen is on the top right. Um, seems pretty minimally enhanced i would say obviously it's a you know it's a 3ds game so on 3DS oh looks... i didn't notice that oh interesting yeah kind of kind of lazy gonna be kind of lazy kind of kind of yeah. wonder, wonderful 101 energy uh uh with uh now this. as as the biggest luigi mansion fan i know and actually one of the only people i know that's played dark moon uh is it necessary to have the map at all times no then why the fuck have it could be uh, it could be optional like it could just be like you you pop it up if you want to sure I believe there was a there's like is it, if you're looking at it, I think there's like a minus um, yes there is yeah there yeah, so, there so is which probably, means that you can like probably press minus to open toggle, it up or, or yeah. like make it smaller yeah um this I think is okay so that's good that's actually that's a that's a big way because I was worried you told me that it was up in the screen I'm like oh no it's fucking locked there like that's stupid yeah. 
Yeah. This is a good solution, actually. Yeah. Um, but Dark Moon coming to Switch, listen, I Luigi's Mansion 1 is my favorite game of all time. I think Dark Moon is a substantially worse game, but it's still a good mm. game. It's I would sure. once again, like it's like that that perfect seven, right? Whereas Luigi's Mansion 1 is a personal 10. Obviously, like it's yeah. not actually a 10, but I love mm. it for uh, various reasons. I mean Luigi's Mansion 3 is also fantastic. Dark Moon is this really clunky level-based game that was designed for 3ds because you're supposed to play it in short bursts it doesn't have yeah. interesting areas it doesn't have interesting bosses it loses all of the charm of luigi's mansion 1 that 3 kind of recaptured a little bit um it is easily the worst luigi's mansion game and it is funny seeing all the reactions in my comments i guess there's just a lot of kids around because people are like i grew up with dark moon this is my nostalgia and i, I was 12 when it came out i guess so i, I should yeah. feel the same way but um People are really defending this game. So I, I guess for a lot of people, this was exciting. You go in the IGN comments, they're like, oh my God, this is my childhood game. I'm so excited it's coming back. It is 10 years old, uh, year mm -hmm. of the Ouija game, of course. So what do you... I'm glad that more 3DS games are coming over. We've seen a lot of GameCube, which we'll talk about even yeah. more. A lot of Wii, rating SNES remakes out the ass from Square Enix, it seems like. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with more 3DS. And if this means yeah. we're getting... Uh, well, for one, this... Uh, Dark Moon runs on the same engine that the remake of one did, so maybe we'll get that yeah. later. Um, we'll see about that. That'd be that'd be make it make a lot of sense, but also it feels like it makes too much sense, you know? Yeah, we'll get just a port of the GameCube version probably, which I'd also be okay with. Um, yeah. but yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, just, of course, just, it'd be okay. just more 3DS games. If this means we can get possibly Kid Icarus or more of those Fire Emblem mm -hmm. games, um, I'd be all for that. But yeah, what do you? What yeah. do you are you excited to play this, Tucker? I actually am. I, I just bought it on 3DS. When? Um. <laughs> Like a month ago. Oh, perfect. I've got a physical copy behind me. Uh, I was talking to Abram last week about us giving it a try for preparing for a video that we're doing called The Decade of Luigi. <laughs> um, but I guess I'll just wait for the fucking Switch part. Because, like, there's so much to play this year that, like, okay, not playing Dark Moon right now is fine. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I've always found the series interesting. I have minimal experience about halfway with the first game and a couple hours with three. Um, but... I would like to play all three of them within the next year, and, and this will be a good way to do that. I, I presume it'll be the best way to play the game. It does look better. I mean, that, that's a pretty good-looking game. It was a great-looking game on 3DS, and up it is... Uh, it's not like they put the most work into it, but it still looks pretty good. Um, So I, I think a second shot, especially for 3DS games, which have largely been stranded. Like, they have such distinct hardware that you have to rework them, and now this game can be put on hardware in perpetuity. We've actually been talking about that with, with a couple of different games over the course of this show is like okay good this game is like free of the shackles of the dual screen horse shit now and so it's just a game that people can play uh and it can be put anywhere um so yeah no i i'm excited i'm excited about this i think it's very interesting and i hope that it means you're i i think you're right i hope it means that uh, other 3ds sports could be coming um yeah very interesting yeah and also, yeah, just once again, the fact that they're announcing a the Peach game is one thing. That's a new game. This is a 3DS port. They're announcing at least, let's say, what would that be? Eight months in advance. If we assume this comes out in like February. Yeah, I January is my is January is my prediction. Yeah. Because uh, actually, Mario ports actually usually come out in January. It happened both with 3D World Plus Bowser Fury and New Super Mario Flex. That was February for 3D. Fuck shit. Whatever. You, the, the general sentiment still remains <laughs> january is taken by fire emblem tucker we're getting that fire Emblem before remake i promise uh, that's something you could announce in a september direct sure, sure i already i already have the entire september direct mapped out of my mind we'll talk Holy about that shit. we'll talk about that one day but i i am already like confident i know what's getting announced in that thing great <laughs> but moving on from that that very weird flurry of nintendo first party announcements back to mm. our headlines batman arkham trilogy coming this fall i would have never expected they would do arkham knight because I think the rumor yeah. was Return to Arkham, the two games, but we're getting all three of them. Uh, looks pretty good. I, I'm not. I've never. I'm not. I'm pretty unfamiliar with these games, but um, cool to see them finally coming. It's. It's always interesting. We, we were talking about this a few weeks ago with like how, it's. It's interesting to look at what weird third party ports are coming at this point. This yeah. is so yeah. late. It's so weird <laughs> to get this in 2023 on the Switch, but I. I won't play this on Switch, but maybe I'll. Maybe yeah. this releasing will like put it in the zeitgeist enough for me to be like, oh, maybe I should go check out um, yeah. Arkham Asylum finally, but. At least play Asylum. I Asylum's the only one I've beaten, and I love Asylum. Bo, it's better Metroid Prime. <laughs> because it is based around 3D Metroidvania elements, but it has also has much... People are going to shit on me. People love Prime, but I'm just saying it. I think it has more rewarding exploration. I think it does its combat in better ways, and it, the way that it tells its story and stuff. It's 
the it's the most high production value like three D uh, Metroidvania style game that I've played, and I really love that game. I mean, I think it's I think it's phenomenal. I had no idea. I had no idea it was a Metroidvania type. Yeah, of you game. you like you explore different areas and you unlock uh, the uh, Arkham Asylum Island over time, and you're sort of just like you've got a central area they're like leading out from it's Arkham Knight is open world isn't it like they, they yeah, so city. It more... so city. oh okay so the first game that's interesting yeah. I did not know that people love city I played Gotham I mean Knights. you know that but you did I played like an hour of it oh ran, okay ran like shit. it was not fun <laughs> um but that's a, that's a pretty big third party get for later this yeah, year yeah it is we got a trailer for this I... game called oh sorry go ahead no I uh just the I love that the switch kind of has everything like I, it People aren't afraid to just port my a collection of games from across multiple generations. My favorite thing with each direct, and this isn't for third parties, but with first parties, is seeing like all the new box arts come out from the press kits and all that, and just thinking, mm-hmm. man, when I have my full complete set of every first party Switch game and I lay it out, this is this is it's not even close, dude. This is easily the best lineup of any Nintendo con. It's, this it's, is still this is still a topic we need to litigate it like specifically. At it's a not point, even but... fucking close, dude. But um. We got a trailer for this game called Gloomhaven coming September 18th. This, I don't even, it's some weird, it doesn't look good card game, I think. It's based on a board game. Oh, um, is it? Is it? Okay. I'm very uh, unfamiliar with it, but it doesn't, it didn't do anything for me. Oh, yeah, damn. Whatever. We got a trailer for Just Dance 2024. Kind of a weirdly long trailer also. It was like a full minute <laughs> for Just Dance. Yeah. Ubisoft I barely Panda remember Mills. Gloomhaven or that because we were just talking about Peach and Luigi's Mansion and Mario RPG. Like, they... they they planned it good because they put the shit that I do not give a fuck about right after the things that are very interesting to talk about. So, yeah, good balance there, Nintendo. Yeah, uh, Silent Hope from X Seed Games was announced. This, this is kind of interesting. It has like really nicely animated two D anime stuff, but then you look at it and it, it looks like a mobile game. It's this two uh, D yeah. kind of action game. There's there's farming elements, bringing back the farm direct <laughs> energy. Kind of reminds me of Oninaki, which I really enjoyed from Square Enix. Not not really enjoyed. It was like this kind of, it's like JRPG junk food. Um, action action RPG junk food, and this kind of looks similar. It, it actually so. does look a lot like a mobile game. Yeah, it, it does look like a mobile game, but I don't know. I, I, if it's, it could be kind of fun. I think it could be fun. Um, we also got uh, that's out, that's not October third. I'm I'm not gonna play it either. Then we got another farming game, and this is like, oh my god, not again. We got Fae Farm. This is already announced, coming out later this year on Switch. I think in September. This is um a sixty dollar game, sucker. I think this looks really? fucking horrible. And I I said this in my video. I don't know. Who was who are these games for? Farming games take up a lot of your time. Yeah. You are playing Animal Crossing, you are playing Stardew Valley, you're playing Story of Seasons. You're not playing fucking Fay Farm. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Maybe I'm just not with the times, but there are too many of these games. Harvestella. Hey, at least that's a JRPG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with, I don't with, with actual weird. combat. And like Rune Factory is like a different enough, I can respect that. New trailer for Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. This game is similarly to Sonic Superstars, although I think even worse. Uh, looks very crusty on Switch. This is actually a very beautiful game on PS5, so uh, don't play it on Switch probably. I'm, I'm watching it right now. I think it looks fine. I, I mean, it doesn't look impressive. You, but... need, to, you need to see the PS5 version. <laughs> you need to see the PS5 version. Uh, sure, okay, sure. Maybe in comparison, yeah. yes. But the like, PS5 as... it, it is one of the actually the best looking racing games I played. Sure. It looks, um, but yeah, it just looks like a Switch game. Good for um, it to come to Switch. Similar to my vibes on the the farm games, Manic Mechanics coming out July thirteenth. This is Tucker. I'm so tired of these Overcooked clones. I cannot fucking take it anymore. Every make a new game. This, that make thing, make yeah. a new fucking game. It's so well, it's also, old. It's also Team Seventeen, same publisher. So they just kind of like this kind of thing, and it is a genre that people largely enjoy. I called it overcarked when, <laughs> when we were watching it. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is another nothing sauce game. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We got the trailer for Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, The Last Spark Hunter. Shadow dropped. Pretty nice. Not doing much for me. I'm not going to play this game Wait, anymore. What? But... The... It's out? Yeah, it came out yesterday. The Sparks of Hope uh, uh, DLC. Not the oh. Rayman DLC. There's still the Rayman DLC to come, but yeah, this DLC got Shadow dropped. Oh, it, also, it, also, it also leaked oh, on the That shows a little I was paying before. attention. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I, mean, I heard I, about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Then we got another Puro leak right here, or tease. He he retweeted, or they retweeted it. Dragon Quest Monsters: The Dark Prince coming December first, twenty twenty three from Square Enix. This was uh, announced uh, in a very weird way, a couple like last month uh, from Square Enix, just saying, "Hey, new new anniversary project, new Dragon Quest Monsters game." 
Yeah, I remember that. When they yeah, announced we it, talk about that, I think. yeah, we did, we did. When they announced it, I didn't think it would be anytime soon because they announced yeah. it in such like a weird press release way. <laughs> yeah, with like a JPEG of like Dragon Quest art. It's like, okay. But here it is. They have the full trailer ready. It's in this direct coming out this year. Um, the game, <laughs> the game graphically Square. doesn't look that <laughs> doesn't look that great, but it is funny no, that the, the Square Enix uh, lineup is filling out this year, similar to last year. Tucker, I'm excited about that. Christ. I Dragon Quest Monsters is, is Dragon Quest Pokemon. I'm interested in this. I don't know if I'll actually yeah. get around to it, but yeah. um, I do like the seemingly annualization of Dragon Quest. Keep shoving it down our throats. No, it's not, I don't think it's seemingly. I mean, there are there have been a lot of Dragon Quest it, it, generations. It has been one Switch. Yeah, it definitely has been yeah. on Switch. So, cool. Whatever. Cool. Yeah, yeah Dragon Quest this Monsters. Is, and this is uh, probably the biggest new third-party game here. Sure. Yeah, I would say so. In terms yeah. of, te- technically, it's a new announcement. Then we yeah. got then we got a, a big deep dive on Pikmin 4 at Tucker. I don't know how much I have to say about this game because we've mm. seen a lot of it now. But yeah. first of all, I love the new glow of Pikmin. I They're was awesome. I was because I don't know if you've seen like there was concept art for Pikmin 3, and these were on there. And people oh. were like, oh, they're ghost Pikmin. And I think it might even have like text saying ghost Pikmin, but this is the same design. Yeah. The ice Pikmin are cute, but they're kind of just rock Pikmin but light blue. Yeah, 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 so yeah. to get like a proper new type of Pikmin, I think is mm-hmm. really exciting. Um the mechanic is cool. You see you they're like they're like fireflies. So you'll throw yeah. them at the enemy when you're exploring at night because you can do night expeditions now. Yeah. They can like phase through the enemies, it kind of looks like. They're just like inside mm-hmm. them messing them up. Very cool. This game looks phenomenal. Um, we've seen there was actually a download card leak. Unreal Engine, which is interesting. Maybe, maybe we can maybe mm-hmm. talk about that in more detail. But um the interiors of the house, all the different items is a GBA oh God, you can man. get, which implies yeah. the existence of the GameCube, which the impl- which implies the existence of Pikmin, Pikmin within one. Pikmin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh Christ! No, yeah, the, the I mean, I think this game only looks better and more interesting every time we see it. I actually think that this trailer is more substantial than than maybe you were indicating with not having much to say because multiple things were revealed here in terms of how different this game will be um, aesthetically, mechanically, uh, uh, topic wise. Of course, Glow Pikmin and the and delving into the nighttime missions. Okay, that that is a cool new step for Pikmin. It was teased before, but now we know what that actually means in terms of how you're going to be approaching uh, it being more dangerous and having that different kind of Pikmin. That's really cool. Um, but not only that, uh, but there's also one v one battles against Olimar, who has goop on his head and he's got a like a green Ochi of his own, and so that's going to be integrated. I assume this will be a multiplayer mode, but also integrated into the story in some way, which is interesting, sort of for breaking up gameplay. We got our first real look at what the cave, I don't actually know what they're calling, but they're basically the Pikmin 2 caves uh, here is, uh, which is awesome. I, I think that does break up the gameplay a lot. We got our first look at multiple indoor locations, which we got teased by the fucking card, but that's new information. And not only that, that you're saving, uh, like the main collectible is actually saving other people and yeah. bringing them back to your camp and building up a base camp and get, unlocking upgrades, upgrading your boots, upgrading your fucking jetpack, upgrading your Ochi, like, that is a substantial You're right. new mechanic. I, I have not actually game. rewatched the trailer. I completely forgot they are adding this. Yeah, this upgrading stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that is yeah, that is. A, but that, that is I mean, that's big. Yeah, that's a yeah. big deal. And, and and it just continues to make me more and more excited for this game. Like, wow, they're really like reconsidering what Pikmin can do. What can we add to make this uh, um, more complex? Because structurally, every Pikmin game is is incredibly simple. It is go out, do a thing for a little bit, go back to the ship. It's nighttime. Repeat. Now that they're adding, uh, building out that base camp and upgrading your character and upgrading Ochi and and having a more gameplay variety when doing the Dandori battles against Olimar and maybe others. Dude, when they those. said Dandori, I was laughing because uh, if you remember when they announced this game, Miyamoto was like, there will be new Dandori. And we were like, what the fuck does that mean, Miyamoto? What are you talking about? <laughs> Multiplayer ba- battles? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, but... Yeah, this game this game looks fantastic. There is a demo releasing next week. I don't think I'm gonna yep. play it June twenty eighth, because yeah, that's a that's a while away. Yeah, I like when a demo is like a week before and it transfers progress. Yep. Um, yep. So I, I probably won't play it. Maybe I will just to give some impressions on the podcast. But th- this game looks fantastic. When I said I didn't have a ton to say about it, it's just kind of like at this point I'm just like just give me it. Just fuck it. I want to yeah. eat it. Give me it all. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll, we'll <laughs> obviously we'll be we'll be diving into it in depth when Absolutely. we um, are reviewing it because. I imagine it'll probably be a decently short game, like most Pikmin games. Sure. But we'll be, we'll, I'm excited. This is, it's yeah. a sleeper. It's a, it's a sleeper. It's, it's really sneaking up on us. It comes out in less than a month. Yeah, um, it does. So very exciting. But that wasn't all, Tucker. True. Puro strikes again. This is once oh, again fucker. just some, just some. Weird I actually did not hear about this. So oh, this is a surprise to me. 
well, it's probably the the least exciting thing that you didn't hear Too about. Late. Yeah, sure. re- realistically, it is one of those things where like I would have never expected it, and that is yeah. of course Pikmin One and Two coming to Switch, available later today or now with a physical release. So happy coming uh, September twenty second. So glad they're doing the physicals. Um, mm-hmm. Another game, Keep Shadow Drop. Very interesting. They are yeah. pretty straightforward ports with a little bit of gyro stuff included in there, but. This is you know what's interesting though. You know what you know what this might indicate? We've got this track record of GameCube port shadow drops. We just mentioned shadow drop in September to get us ready for Dark Moon. <laughs> we I think th- there's another one I have in mind for September, but um yeah, I I think this is a clear First of all, it's hype that we're going to be able to have all four Pikmin games on Switch. That's it. That's it's huge. so cool. It's I so love awesome how there. you can have every Xenoblade game on Switch, you can have every well not X. <laughs> you can have every Bayonetta game on Switch. Now you can have every Pikmin game happen, on Switch. Though. X, X, X will, will, X will happen. happen, yeah, especially if Switch ends up lasting until 2028, which it's going to. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Pikmin 1 and 2, I'm going to wait for that physical version. I just play these yeah. games and beat them for the first time fully yeah. this year, yeah. so I'll be waiting until September, but um, super cool, and uh, just talking about getting games forward and getting them on this platform for the future mm-hmm. is very nice. Um, yeah. Are you gonna and it just shows this? the variety of what kinds of ports and effort they're willing to put into making all their different games accessible on this hardware. We saw one of the most high effort remasters Nintendo's ever done in Metroid Prime remastered, you know, not a great game, but a really good remake. Uh, and and then basically just HD Pikmin 1 and 2, not many changes. It has the motion controls from the from the uh, new play control versions and yeah, just put them on the Switch for a couple of bucks, buy them separately, buy them together. Awesome. I mean, this is perfect. This is, this is what we wanted for yeah. the longest time for them to start doing, and they're doing it now. I mean, a substantial amount of big games are now available on Switch from all across generations of Nintendo. We have we have ports, or at least on NSO, from every generation of Nintendo, except for, I guess, well, I, I was going to say DS, but even then we have BDSP. So I think there's, I think there's now representation from every single generation of Nintendo. That is cool. Yeah. One weird thing they did, this is like, it's kind of a nothing, but they changed the logo. I don't know if you saw this, of the games. But not only that, so so Pikmin 4 has this really kind of boring, sterile logo that I don't really yeah, it like. Does. It's this That's green, right. like, gradient. They changed Pikmin 1 and 2 to have the same thing. But not only that, Tucker, I don't know if you saw this, they updated the logo for Pikmin 3. Like, if, there's an update for Pikmin 3 Deluxe on Switch that makes the logo this. <laughs> what a really? fucking weird In thing to do. I don't know about in the game, but on the icon for the Switch. Like, if you, like, on the icon, like, when you click on it. Why would they do that? What? <laughs> what? Miyamoto, Miyamoto was sitting down. He what was like, the icon look like now? I need to go look this up. It's the same thing. Just the logo has changed to have the new Pikmin font. <laughs> Lux new icon update? It's very weird. I don't know why they would. I, like, life, show me this shit. For Pikmin 1 and 2, it's fine. But going back to Pikmin 3 Deluxe, very weird. Yeah, and it just looks worse. Yep. Whatever. I mean, we'll we'll forget about this in like yeah, we're not gonna yeah, it's it's fine. It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just very weird for them to to think that they even do. Um, oh, that's bizarre. Oh, Nintendo, you're fucking strange. <laughs> I do also want to once again emphasize how important it is that they. This is the second time they've done it this year. I think they're setting a precedent. I do think we will get one in September, but also mm. getting that physical release later is yeah. such a huge fucking win for yeah. people that collect physically especially when you're seeing alan wake 2 be digital only i think i think that new like a dragon guiding game is digital only for yes. nintendo to come out and be like listen we're gonna give you the most bare bones gamecube port and we're gonna give you a cartridge for it that is so nice i think i think they're pretty fairly so, priced it's 50 for yeah. both so yeah. i downloaded them both uh through anyone's account don't tell him um but so they're there it's 50 for both or 20 or 30 each 30 right. piece yeah, yeah. Guess the file size of these games, and guess how little of a cartridge they need together. Guess the combined file size. Combined file size, one point four gigabyte. Okay, a little bit off. They're one each, one okay. gigabyte. Okay. Each. okay, they're tiny. Games. The GameCube games. <laughs> um, and it's awesome. I mean, like, perfect. Took no no time to download. I think reasonably priced, all things considered. Uh, Could have been cheaper, but. Whatever, like I'm not gonna. Yeah, that like much. if it was forty for the collection, that would have been nice. But yeah. Prime Remastered was forty for one game, so for two games, I think it's. I don't think it's like you know get your two better games. Out. They are better than well, Pikmin One is a prop. Pikmin One might be worse than Metroid Prime. 
Sorry, Vimpai. <laughs> Dude, it's so funny because like anybody that that watches this podcast just doesn't doesn't know us. They come in. This is their first episode of Nintendo Select. They're like, why are these kids hating on Metroid Prime so much? <laughs> this fucking meme is a giant meme. You guys better get used to it. It's not going anywhere. Christ. But um, oh, awesome. and, and one other thing I wanted to talk about with Pikmin Four is the fact that it is on Unreal Engine. So this is weird because Nintendo internally has never made a game on Unreal Engine. Yeah. Um, Miyamoto said in 2017 they had mastered Unreal Engine, <laughs> which is fucking weird. Um, so people, it, pe- kind, well, kind of maybe an insight that this game has been an actual active, active, active-ish development for like six years, which is possible because in 2015 he infamously said Pikmin 4 is nearing completion. Now he was pretty clearly talking about Hey Pikmin, I think at this point. Mm. But um, interesting because the only other Nintendo game that is on Unreal Engine is Yoshi's Crafted World, which is yeah. made by Goodfeel. So I think this maybe implies that that game was being co-developed with Goodfeel. And we'll actually talk about a Goodfeel game later, but that might be some some insight into what Goodfeel's been doing, potentially. Just fully hmm. speculation on my part. But cool. Nintendo trying out more engines. Speaking of uh, shitty physical releases that uh, <laughs> that I don't know what they're doing, uh, Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 coming to Switch October 24th has Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3... And then the S or the NES games, very cool, great collection. Getting yeah. a physical release, which to be fair, to their credit, I didn't even expect. I think that's a yeah, surprise, yeah. Um, and I'm excited about that. Tucker, there are no games on the cartridge. Not even the NES games are on the cartridge. What does it do? It you put it in, and then I think they said there's like a gigabyte of of storage on there, and you you can download the games. <laughs> they they release this very weird image saying what's on the cartridge. There's no full game on it. It's hmm. so weird. What? I don't what, know. What, what about the like ten kilobyte fucking DOS game or whatever? I don't know. M- may- maybe what, those smaller ones. What are about on the there. graphic novel? I, what I about may- the music selection. Maybe some of that stuff is on there, but God, they're fucking PS One and PS Two games. You couldn't yeah. <laughs> come on. You could get. You could have got them on the cartridge. Come on, you're cheaping out here. But the, what, what is it like the one gigabyte Switch cartridge you can buy or yeah. whatever? It's but, bizarre. Uh, that is like the only bad element of this, though. Or, like yeah. the only downside. For because sure. otherwise. Coming to Switch, yeah, that's where I'm gonna play them. Awesome, perfect. I'm gonna get really into those games. Playing, we are gonna do it together. Go. I'm excited. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah and I've at I least the first a, game. I don't have a, a lot of experience with Metal Gear, so it's like it's a great, I, I really accessible way to do it. Yeah, and not only is it a, a great collection in terms of having those older games as well, but you can buy them separately if you want to on the eShop. Godspeed. I mean, this is the perfect way to do it. I think that so many of the retro retro collections, it's fine that they're you can't buy them separately because it's 20 bucks anyway, and you're getting like six games. So what are you going to complain that you can't buy Mega Man one by itself? Uh, but having these games, which are way bigger than most of the collections that we see, or in terms of uh, how much time you're going to be putting into them, being able to buy just one or two or three separately. Perfect. This is what people really should be doing. I mean, this is, this is one of the new gold standards for, for putting out one of these collections. Yeah. And it's exciting that they're coming to switch. This is the first time, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 has ever been on an Nintendo console, I believe, because we had Twin Stakes, which is Metal Gear 1, yeah, correct? One. And then which three pe- was on pe- three people, are, people are questioning why that isn't in here. That's a Konami thing. Who knows? Um, but <laughs> really, really exciting. I'm excited to try out the series that I'm very unfamiliar with. I played a little bit of Phantom Pain, and I didn't love what I played, but maybe it's because I was playing the fifth entry. Um, sure. I will say, Konami, just weird company. First of all, we have not seen Silent Hill 2 yet, no. and that's supposed to come out this year, which is not related to Nintendo, but... I feel like this collection completely overshadows the MGS3 remake, which, to be frank, from the screenshots we've seen, didn't look that good. Well, it's also not going to be for a while, so I don't think this is a problem. I think it's just like, oh, hey, me- bring year. back Metal Gear. Is that confirmed? I believe so. I No, I don't think there was a date on it. Metal Gear Delta? Yeah, Metal Gear Solid Delta. Uh, I could be wrong about that. but I'm, I'm looking it up, but... I, I, th- I thought there wasn't a window. Maybe not. Of course, when I search Metal Gear Solid Delta release date, people are just talking about the... Okay, I guess no, I'm I'm wrong. There's no window, so that, that okay, could be okay. further off. But I mean, yeah, we saw no, we, we, we saw in-game screenshots, and it doesn't look that great. So we saw in-game screenshots. Huh? When? Yeah, it was crocodile. I? It was a crocodile screenshot. That's in-game. It looks like oh. a very like I mean, it looks it looks good. It just looks kind of basic. It's not like this is not Resident sure. Evil remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, this is awesome. I mean, I, I think for me, this was the third-party announcement of the direct, except for one thing that we'll get to in a second. Um, but yeah, love this. Awesome. Again, much like Arkham, much like porting fucking Dark Moon, much like porting Pikmin 1 and 2, the Switch is just the system to play all the games that you want to, that are older games that you want to play on one place. 
It is the in, ultimate in portability. Concept. Goddamn. Jesus Christ. Well, Tucker, I, I, you alluded to something. This is the next announcement. I pop for this. I am so excited. This is finally coming to Switch. No, this wasn't my big thing. It's, it's, it's oh. next, though. Oh, 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 I see. Sorry, sorry. Well, I'm very excited for this regardless. Vampire Survivors coming to Switch yeah. October 17th. Yeah. This game is so fucking good, Tucker. I don't know it's if you awesome. played it. This I game love is Vampire Survivors. This is this is one of the best games of last year, in my opinion. My mm. my girlfriend also loves this. She actually play, has played it way more than me. Um, but the big thing here, obviously, this has been exclusive to uh, Steam, Mobile, and Xbox. Mm. Four player co-op, new edition. Oh, that really? is, that oh, is new. That it. is new. Perfect for Switch. I'm I'm yeah. so excited to dive into this. We're gonna do a yeah. co-op. I hope it also comes to PlayStation. Might get it there instead. Might really get it both because it's fucking like a two dollar game. Yeah. Um, yeah. But go for the platinum yeah. PlayStation while we play in bed or something on, on Switch Lite. Sure. Perfect. I'm this game is really something special. Um on, on ironically, you look at it and you're like, what the fuck is this? But it, it's actually a genuinely really good game. If you have not yeah. heard about Vampire Survivors, I really <laughs> recommend it. Everyone loves this game yeah my friend sam is addicted to it abram loves it andrew loves it the people are fucking kind of funny love it you and i play it tanner played it. he thought it was awesome and this switch is the perfect home for it i mean that's the place where i would put certain the most time into it i i remember seeing it be announced uh for mobile at the game awards last year i'm like oh that's really cool but i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play the fucking mobile. that's where I, uh, that's where i've played it oh really oh yeah and, and obviously it's great on there i'm sure yeah. it's great on there um i think vampire survivors is just the current example of one guy making an awesome game and just everyone loves it and it, we want it to be everywhere and it continues to sell and just like boom 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 the dominoes keep falling godspeed vampire survivors you're do, another one of like the like things to aspire to like this is the kind of game that you want to happen because it's just creative everyone loves it it's coming everywhere and it's one guy just kind of having a cool idea you know what kind of game we don't want to see more of tucker rhythm Sorry, Headbangers Rhythm Royale. Now maybe Wait, I'm being. You don't want to see this? For, I thought I, was, I, I thought was an, an, it was an, another fucking just style of multiplayer game. I'm just tired of. I like it actually does sure. look pretty good, but I feel like we get so many of these, at least aesthetically, Fall Guys, Gang Beast looking games. Mm. This is gameplay wise pretty different. It's more like mini games, yeah, of course. Um, and and a rhythm, but it's it's Fall Guys rhythm. It's it's rhythm Fall Guys. Yeah. Um, being published, I believe. Oh, once again, Team Seventeen. Yeah, Team Seventeen yeah. definitely has a flavor. And I don't mm. think that flavors for me. Maybe maybe five years ago, but I, I think I'm very yeah. thoroughly done with this kind of game. But I don't know. It looks fine, I guess. <laughs> what, what's interesting about the Battle Royale genre, it's something I don't gravitate towards. However, I think it's very interesting. I think it feels like the modern current step in what multiplayer games can do. And I like being, I like seeing it be tried in all sorts of different ways. I mean, even thinking back to Tetris 99 and Mario 35 and... Uh, and rhythm games and shooting games and racing games. And it's like, yeah, Battle Royale is a very compelling format for, let's be frank, most gamers. So a rhythm game in that style is something that has never been done before. So this is actually something that is both a step forward for the Battle Royale genre, quote unquote genre, but also uh, the rhythm game genre. So I think this is a really cool, modern, forward thinking kind of dumb thing. And then the pigeons look like cocks. They look like penises. On, on the logo, it looks like there's a willy. It's really funny. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> I like how you were you were like making like really like salient points, and then you was like, and the biggest part of this, it looked like a cock. They look like they look like wobbly penises. I'm tired of the wobbly penis genre, the Fall Guys Bean Man <laughs> genre. <laughs> but uh, yeah, whatever. This is it, it's largely nothing. I'm not going to play it, but I I'm like okay, this this does yeah, have. I, I, maybe I was being a little bit hard, a little bit hard. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it looks hard. Um, now, Tucker, this is the game you were alluding to. This is yeah. from the Sonic Mania team, Christian Whitehead. This is probably one of the biggest Sega L's I've seen in a while, although they own Atlas, so that's there's two L's in a row. Uh, I cannot believe, I don't know what happened with Christian Whitehead and Sega, that whatever falling out they could have had, because this should have been a Sega game. Penny's yeah. Big Breakaway coming early 2024, Private Division publishing it. This game looks sublime. This is 3D awesome. Sonic Mania, and it looks fucking awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. Aesthetically, mechanically, movement-wise... Uh, she's got a yo-yo there's funny penguins it's goofy as hell it's got that nice uh it's kind of got the, the sonic mania like color palette kind it of does. like uh, it does mirage uh, what is it mirage saloon or like uh studiopolis they've got this sort of like pastel but really like poppy colorful thing it's got uh the same kind of sonic thing where like there's like grid patterns on stuff it's just a combination of factors in a genre that's been flagging recently that's like just so distinct and it looks like it's really tightly designed. And from the developer's history, this is going to be a 9 out of 10. And I, I'm like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I yeah. cannot wait for this game. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, you know, 
it looks great. I'm not sure if it's something I'll play immediately, but if the sure. reviews are there, I'll definitely check it out. Because yeah. there are the so many... The reviews will be there, Bell. I know. I know they will be. Sonic. Well, the reviews are also there for Sonic Mania, and that game's not very good. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, it, it looks great. I There is, like, this... There's a lot of these... these oh, wait, 3D... did you end up beating Mania? Uh, I have not played much more of it. I actually... I was I forget what I was I'm more than halfway through it but I, I I died on a stage and it put me I was I died on act 2 of a stage and it put me back to the beginning of act 1 of that section and I was like nope I'm done for yeah. now I yeah. might go back to it I, probably not um but there's a lot of like indie games like this like I think of like Fro Gun and um sure. uh, Demon I think it's Demon's Turf a lot of like these 3D like smaller scale 3D platformers so getting more of that but obviously this is definitely more bigger budget private division publishing it is very nice I like this yeah. kind of stuff yeah. I I like seeing it around I don't know if I'll actually play it, but it's it's a feel good announcement. Another feel good announcement: you can now race Tucker in Mario's bathroom. Oh, that's right. Because we got our first look at Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Course Pass, Way Five. Um, no release date, which once again I really think is hinting at a September direct. Although this might just be a Twitter announcement um, sometime in August. This has to come before that. I would. Um, it's summer. So in September, summer, Tucker. I don't know if you if you if you missed out no, on it's that. Not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It literally is not. Summer is June, July, August. You lost September, October, November Tucker, is fall. Tucker, I'm sorry you lost this one. Wait, no, that's, that's fall, actually true. Fall starts September 20th. September is summer. Oh. You lost this one. You just made an that's ass crazy. of yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> summer. God damn. You were so Who's... confident. Who chose this? Hmm? This is fucking stupid. This is how it's been your hmm. entire life. Hmm. I need someone needs to change this. This isn't okay. Hmm, fuck off. Anyway. Summer just started for us, Tucker. <laughs> yes, Christ, it did! Summer just started yesterday. Um, But I am yeah, oh, going back on track. Mario Kart 8, new DLC wave. Oh. Uh, pro- probably a Twitter announcement for the release date. I would imagine in August or something because there's nothing in August. Um, but we got a new look at a new track. It's not a tour track, so that's nice. They're yeah. keeping up with that theme, and as well as three new characters or returning characters: PD Piranha, great Git from Double Dash, mm-hmm. Wiggler from Mario Kart Seven, and Kamek from Mario Kart Tour. Uh, three characters this time, as opposed to two in the last wave. No, Mar- it was fun. There was no. It was two. It was um. It was Bert. Oh, oh no, you're right. No, it was Birdo. It but was it had Birdo. like a million colors, which yes. doesn't count. Yeah. But. No. You're right. So. <laughs> The balance of this DLC has been very weird. I wonder if they saw like great sales numbers and were like, "We needed to actually put effort in," because the first yeah. what three waves had nothing interesting in it, and then they yeah. saw, now they're doing new courses and new characters. Mm-hmm. Um, so very weird. But I'm excited for this. More characters is a great thing. PD Piranha, uh, Double Dash, the Goat. So yeah. also also Wiggler, Mario Kart Seven, the Goat. Yeah, exciting. Uh, no, they no, didn't show any other tracks, which is weird. Yeah, and that, I think that there are two factors to this. Is like, okay, yo, everything about this they showed was cool, but like. Why didn't they just go that extra 10 seconds that it would have taken to show the other courses and also give us a release date? Like, it can't be that far away. It's been so, it's been a reasonably long time since the last one. We would have expected it to, I I, I thought this would be a shadow drop. Yeah. (laughs) So, just weird. Cool, but like, has asterisks on it for like, it's it's weird. It it could even be like, they know what courses are in this. Just show them to us. It's done. They're ready. I bet the next wave is already done. Yeah. I feel like. Maybe this could even be a Twitter announcement in like two weeks. Maybe they're sure. just trying to be yeah. weird and they yeah. want to like spread it out for some reason. Because th- maybe they thought like, oh, if we don't show it in this direct at all, people would be like, oh, what's going on? But kind of weird. This next announcement, Tucker, we we, we talked about last week because it leaked. Um, for some reason, my my Chrome just completely crashed. But we can keep Star talking Ocean. about it anyway. Right. Yeah, Star Ocean, uh, the second story R from Square Enix. This remake actually looks really good. It's coming out November yeah. 2nd. I... I'm going to make an attempt to play the first game, I think, before this, because this really actually right. spoke to me. I, I love I love just the consistency of Square Enix just releasing everything every month. Mm. There's 30 games a year. Um, getting Star Ocean, a series I'm very unfamiliar with, getting it onto Switch and onto other platforms, I, I believe this is multi-plat. Um, getting it out there is very nice. And this new art style, obviously, they're, you know, they're taking inspiration from the HD 2D stuff. I think this looks better than the HD 2D games. It is it is a 3D environment yeah, with a yeah. 2D sprite. I think this game looks it's beautiful. It's HD 2D 3D. It's it's two D three D. Yeah, <laughs> it's just two D three D in H in HD. Um, I thought this looks fantastic. It is full voice acting. Of course, this was a SNES game, so I'm I'm in. I don't know if I'll yeah. have time to play this one, but I'm gonna try after beating Yakuza and Final Fantasy sixteen. I think if I can squeeze in the first game, which is like twenty hours, which that's also on Switch. If I can somehow manage that, maybe like in bed playing it on Switch or something, a little, a little bedtime game. 
get into this because I th- I thought this looked really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a game that I'm particularly interested in, but for what it is, it's like, oh, they really put some effort into this. And it, as we were talking about last week, just a weird pull, just strange. Just do it, okay? Put a lot of effort to it. Fine. Hope it's great. I hope Square Enix just keeps releasing every video game. <laughs> they yes, God, Godspeed. Keep going, Square. No. I believe uh, at the even if it means here. we get a Babylon's Fall and a uh, and a and a, and a Balance of Wonder World every once in a while and a Forspoken. <laughs> hey, th- those are pretty rare, all things considered. Oh no, they absolutely are in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah. What else we got, Bo? Winding down here, only a couple more announcements, uh, and we have a do have a write in about this one. WarioWare Move It coming November third. New WarioWare game, direct sequel, pretty much to WarioWare Smooth Moves. I know you uh, and Abram love that game. Out of nowhere, Tucker. I don't think anybody expected this. <laughs> yeah. How do you it's how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Yeah. I'm so excited for this. I mean, what's interesting is now we have a really unique and compelling duology of WarioWare games on the Switch. Get it together was something very different for the series, focusing on uh the, the, the different characters and all being controllable with actual sticks rather than gimmicks of the micro games. Um, and it felt very distinct for the series but it always felt to me when i was playing it like why isn't this using the hardware to it's like this switch switch to so many weird shit there's a fucking ir camera why did they do that i don't know it was used like twice but warrior is perfect for these kind of things and so they made a weird one that didn't use it and now they're using a weird one that uses all of it and it looks so fun it looks like an evolution of what smooth moves does it, it's got um, different unique things for the series like a like a board game kind of mode where you play micro game and stuff like they're really putting some effort into this. I mean, it, I think it looks awesome, and I I cannot wait for this. I, I, I think this is very, very, very exciting. Yeah, we had the, a write-in from Whirlwind in the Discord here. Uh, just curious what you think of the new WarioWare. Honestly, I didn't think they'd make another one on Switch, much less a yeah. Smooth Moves sequel. I've really only played a game on Wario and get it together, so I'm curious what other people think about the other games since I hear they're good. Well, Whirlwind, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy to say to you, I think you've played the worst two games in the series. It's only mm. up from there. Get it together is mm. fine. I enjoyed my time with that game, but it does not play like another WarioWare game. Smooth Moves is, it, that is WarioWare at its core. So to see yeah, a sequel yeah. to that, I think is really exciting and just unexpected. Also, Game of Wario yeah. is not very good at all. Um, mm, I haven't played that one. I mean, it's That's a, an expensive fucking game, isn't it? Yeah, it's like 100, maybe 150. Um, yeah, not, not, not nothing too much. No. <laughs> I'm not spending $150 on Game of War. <laughs> WarioWare Move It, it just... I've seen people, specifically this announcement, I've seen a lot of people pointing to and being like, oh, they're really wrapping up the Switch. What? <laughs> why what are you would, talking about? Why would they waste another WarioWare game on Switch? Obviously, this 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 had to have been planned from the inception of Get It Together. It's only been two years. This game didn't take two years to develop. It's probably been in development since before Get It Together even finished. It's being made mm-hmm. by Intelligent Systems also. It's just very weird to see them. Sure? It is, yes. I, I actually, I wasn't sure at first because... They showed like that board game mode, and I was like, "Oh, is Indie Cube making a Warrior yeah, War game?" That's that. that's yeah. what I thought, but no. In the direct, it actually says copyright intelligent system. So, Bizarre. um, to see them pump out another one, a little hurt. It's not Rhythm Heaven, intelligent systems. What are you sure. doing? Sure. What are you doing? But oh, it's dead. Let the dream die. It's it's really cool to see this. I I think this looks yeah. fantastic, like you said. And yeah, get it together wasn't what I wanted from a Warrior War on Switch using the hardware because I mean the moment the Switch was revealed, everybody was like, "Oh." WarioWare is going to be crazy yeah. with the AR, IR camera and, and motion controls, and then they didn't do that with Get It Together. So, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Fifty bucks, nice and lean. Yeah, perfect. I'm God, not... you remember the classic thing where they're like, "You guys, would you guys be interested in buying a WarioWare Dude. game for fifty bucks?" They're like, "There's not a WarioWare game announced. What are you talking about?" And then it's like, "How about a WarioWare game?" For a week bucks? later, a week later, they announced like, Get It Together. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That was such a weird survey they God. sent out. Plot twist. Talk oh, by the way, bit. also, we didn't mention, but uh, uh, Detective Pikachu Returns is also $50. Oh, I did not know that. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, maybe it should be free. Maybe it shouldn't be released. <laughs> it was oh, fucking uh, speaking of a game that shouldn't be released, uh, now everybody wants to switch makes even less sense. Because we've got a better casual party game. For only $3 the more. For only $3 yeah. more, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lol. What Nintendo. A, Nintendo's so weird. It's but it's so much fun to no, cover. Though. November third for this, so at this point we're kind of rounding out the announcements. That means October sixth, Detective Pikachu. October twentieth, which we'll get to Mario Wonder. November third, WarioWare, and November seventeenth, Super Mario RPG. That is a fucking nice two months, Tucker. That is a nice two months. And it's not like it's a lonely two months either, because uh, Starfield and Spider Man and Mortal Kombat and yada 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 also release in that time. Assassin's this, Creed. 
it, it took it took a while to make it all come into picture truly usually i feel like we yeah. know like we didn't know about mortal Kombat until very recently we didn't know mm -hmm. the exact day for starfield this year is like a sleeper for just every company yeah playstation microsoft nintendo banging God banging damn. around um then we got uh, kind of the wrap up here. They talked about Nintendo Live in Seattle. My my frustration yeah. with this just continues, Tucker. I don't know if you're paying attention. So I've talked about how they're doing this weird raffling system to get into this. If you have PAX badges, you don't get in. You need to enter to uh, have a chance to get into the Nintendo Live. Yeah. And this little thing here, they were like, another way you can get in is by winning Smash Bros. tournaments throughout July. What? What the fuck? <laughs> That was a real thing they said. There, there was, they put up a bunch of dates like July 22nd, July 27th. If you place in the top 10 in these these Smash Bros. tournaments in game, yeah, I you wasn't will, paying attention. It's like, what, what, are you, what is this? Just let us in. Let me buy a ticket. I'll give you $50. Please, anything. <laughs> I hate, Same. I hate, especially because like people have to travel to go to conventions. You're yeah. raffling off people's idea of having to buy a hotel and a plane ticket. Smash players don't have much money. So, what are they doing? True. Very weird. Also, just weird to even show it here. They didn't, like, yeah. confirm, like, oh, you're going to be able to play WarioWare and Mario Wonder there, which I assume you will be. Yeah, but all, all these games. I, I would I would hope so, anyway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, weird to show that there. Then they came back on screen, uh, uh, Koizumi and, and Takahashi, they were like, thank you for playing Zelda. Here's some amiibo. And You guys get... have been enjoying Zelda, and it's been giving us a lot of money. Yeah. Thank you. Give, give us more money for these new amiibos. So yeah, we're getting the Zelda amiibo and the Ganondorf amiibo. Both look very good. I saw They're in Japan, awesome. the Ganondorf amiibo is more, it costs more than Zelda, so it'll probably be the same in the West. I guess he's a thicker, of, 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 of a thicker quality. But we actually did have a ride in here, if I can find it. Ganondorf um, is of a thicker quality. <laughs> yeah, so let's go ahead and get into this a little bit here. Dampar in the Discord said, Surprised there was no mention of Zelda DLC, but the more I think about it, the more I'm okay if it never happens, and they just get to work I on the next that. title. Tears of the Kingdom yeah, already has plenty yeah. to do. I yeah. don't know if I'm ready to say it with confidence that there's no DLC for this game. At the very least, Master Mode has to happen. So mm. maybe that could be like a drop during the September Direct. But it is... That is a notable absence from this direct alongside Pride yep. 4. I think everybody was expecting the, the Tears of the Kingdom DLC to be announced here. Maybe they're worried people aren't done with the game yet, which, to be fair, I, I think most people probably aren't done with mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. But that was... My friend pretty... Sam, who's played for almost 200 hours, just finished it last night. Yeah, it's, a, it's like... Aiden's a, finishing it today. Yeah, it's like a 250-hour game at 100%. So, um, <laughs> very interesting no DLC for this. I, I'm Like I said, I'm not confident there's no paid DLC yet, no expansion. Yeah. I would not be upset though if they just want no, to release yeah. it. definitely master mode. You got to do that. Maybe some quality of life stuff. If I, if I don't think there was anything they need to fix really, but yeah, um, yeah. Um, Give us master mode, free update, and then move on to Zelda Zelda three. Give us yeah. Zelda number three. All right, and then it ends Tucker with the final announcement: Super Mario Bros. Wonder releasing October twentieth. <laughs> This but game. We're gonna talk about this game so much for the next few months. Holy shit! This but game. We're gonna looks talk about so this game good. for the next few years. We're gonna be talking I about this game for the next decade. I saw some. I, I said something right before this game was revealed. Like they were like, "Here's our final announcement," and I'm like, "Because we knew, we knew it was gonna be." As we were talking about earlier, we see Super Mario RPG. I'm like, okay, they're gonna close on Mario. <laughs> and then there was no, there was no real surprise. But I said as that was like transitioning, I'm like, "This is a big moment. Like this is." a really important moment for game history because Mario is maybe the most important video game franchise of all time. And 2D Mario is historically the best selling of Mario and Mario as 2D Mario, especially, especially 2D Mario outside of, uh, outside of the um, maker games has been the same thing for ostensibly our entire lives. And we are finally on the precipice of not only getting a new game, which hasn't happened since if you want to be if you want to get tricky about it and say uh dr luigi okay or not dr luigi, fucking luigi bros or whatever it's super new super, super luigi, luigi yeah. i i got that wrong three times but you know what third time is a yeah. uh it's been like a decade since a new game well it's been a decade since that if you want to get technical yeah, that's about it, mario maker yeah but yeah but this is i mean and it, not only is this a big deal because it's new to the mario game this game's gonna sell fucking gangbusters on one of the best-selling consoles of all time it also looks it looks amazing like they just reinvented what what you could do with mario they crammed it full of shit that i never even thought of before and it's one of the most it's it's like easily the most excited i've ever been for a mario game because there hasn't really been an exciting 2d mario game uh in my in my, in my lifetime <laughs> 
So, goddamn, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is it could be one of the greats. It, it, it honestly could be. I have so much to say about this game. Um, Jesus Christ. Per- first of all, fucking biggest, fattest L for, uh, what is it, Christopher Dring on Twitter saying that Zelda is the final big game on Switch. Mm-mm. This game's going to sell 25 million copies. Yeah. Yeah, th- this game's going to be absolutely massive. Um, It looks incredible and this might be a bit hyperbolic maybe it's because i don't you know i it's been six years since i really felt that so maybe i'm forgetting the feeling Mm. i feel as excited for this game this 2d mario game as i would for a 3d mario i think Mm. i i I am the closest easily shocked by how excited i am for this because i'm not super big on 2d mario normally i I, I love the games i i'm actually a new soup defender i think those i think even you right. is great i think two is fun um I, I love all those games but this looks so good and it's what i was talking about with mario rpg of how i'm glad they're branching off and letting mario be a little freaky yeah mario has been sterile for so long and this is the definition <laughs> of a freaky mario game this is the freakiest mario game we've ever seen and, and to be fair yeah. odyssey odyssey was pretty freaky at times yeah, it was freaky. but we got Mario stretching up and down this yep. incredible art style that reminds me of the issue of Nintendo Power, uh, yep. the final issue of that. I, I, I did a side by side comparison. Yeah, I, I immediately said yeah, that when I saw it. the art style. Um, yeah. when, he, when he does the jump pose, it's literally, literally yep, the same exactly. pose. The yeah. animation, his eyes are like looking a little bit weird, dude. Like it's they do on the clay. This might be one of the best looking 2D platformers I've ever seen, and I, you know, yeah. it, it's you know, personal taste. I've seen some people saying they don't think it looks that good. I, I think you're insane, but personal taste i cannot believe how fucking good this looks yeah um I and it's also so man. interesting <laughs> that there's just so much to break down because there's a lot that's new i mean they're changing fundamental things about 2d mario that aren't apparent from first blush you're like okay yeah no he's jumping on some he's jumping on some goombas and there's multiplayer and he's running right away from a boulder and like yeah i've done that before but when you really start to like break down like gameplay segment by gameplay segment what is new Enemy wise, mechanic wise, and just structure wise, there's a lot of changes being made here. There are, at least as of what we know, six playable characters, which has never happened before. Yoshi's there, playable, which is hype. Yeah, Daisy's never been playable before ever in a, in a 2D platformer. Uh, there's no timer anymore. There's no score anymore. There are still there lives, are... which I think is a is an interesting choice. I feel like they yeah, could go with that's, that. That's a little bit weird, but yeah. Um, there are two main collectibles per stage as opposed to three, which is a minor change, but it might change up the flow. There is a whole host of transformations, which power-ups kind of got towards, but these are much, like, impacting the way you're moving Ooh, around a dude, lot that's more. that's a good point. I didn't even realize. We don't see, like, a Fire Mario in this. Uh, we see Fire Peach. Oh, do we? Uh, so, okay. Or, like, okay. she's in her white dress with, like, the red trim, so that's, okay. I mean, that okay. is Fire Peach, but... We didn't see anyone throw a fireball in this. Yeah. So it could even just be an ultimate costume. We're like, there's no confirmation on that. Um, but everything seems to be new here. I mean, even the most basic enemies are doing weird shit, like pink skating Koopa Troopas and a, and a skating Wiggler. And, and then most jump, of the enemies are out. new. Yeah. Well, no, actually, that's from Mario 3. It's called sure. a Patooie. Uh, but really had to... it's mostly new stuff. I'm not excited for this game anymore. I thought Patooie no, was new. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we did have a, a write-in from Benpai. I just want to read it here. Uh, what would you like to see with Super Mario Bros. Wonder? What do you think would be a great way for them to include content to make it feel like a full package? Well, I think something interesting that you touched on is the amount of just new stuff here. Yeah. New Super Mario Bros. laid the foundation for what modern Mario has been ever since the DS and Wii. But even yeah. that game realistically didn't have that much new stuff in it. It was mostly taking mm. like, oh, here's what a Pokey looks like in this new art style. Here's what Koopas look like. And these yeah. are all old enemies. Were there? I, I, there probably were some new enemies, but most of them weren't. No, there were. Yeah, there was like uh, the spikes that make fucking snowballs and like the crows and stuff. But like pretty sure. small in the grand scheme. For the most part, it was enemies that you were kind in... of swap maybe a new fish. Right. It was mostly enemies that were in Mario Three and Mario World. So, given that, this is definitely the biggest departure any Mar any platforming Mario game has had from the predecessor. Um, this is the yeah. most fresh and refreshing Mario game we've seen in a long time. So to answer the question of like how to, to make this feel like a complete package, just have a ton of levels and a ton of unique ideas. People yeah. praise Tropical Freeze for how each level is very diverse and, and all that. If they can make this game just chock full of content and fresh ideas and new enemies left and right, don't reuse yep. them too much. Just keep it going. Yeah. 
Dude, it could, I mean, and one thing I, I don't, I haven't done like the true proper proper analysis. I did a video with Caleb, kind of going frame by frame, but I would mm. need to count. We don't even see that many levels in this trailer. I don't think. I think we see like maybe five levels. Um, I don't know. Based I on the backgrounds, uh, that might be. And true. they could reuse them. They could be reusing backgrounds. Yeah, I, I think I think there are going to be some that have the same background, but they're also not the traditional kind of backgrounds. I mean, you were pointing out in your videos like. What the fuck is this? It's like cubes in the background. Like, what's, yeah. what's going on here? And and the backgrounds are more dynamic and interacting with the level a little bit more and syncing with the music and stuff, which they did lightly in past games. But I think that complete package here doesn't really matter to me because it's an exciting 2D Mario game. And I've never I've never really felt that way. Um, and I think what's weird is I watch this trailer and I'm already like this trailer is the best 2D Mario I've ever experienced. Like, this will be my favorite 2D Mario, and I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, and it's just it's just so crazy that we're on the precipice of a possible reinvention for Mario, at least a new direction. Uh, because if this means that we're getting 2D Marios more consistently now, even if they're not 1 or 2 and 3, but something completely different with a new art style, new sets of enemies, like... We're returning to the creativity of like the NES days where they, they would just sh throw shit at the wind and like see what stuck. And then it stuck too hard. <laughs> and they were like, get it off. Help. Stop. Too much soup. Too much soup. Yeah. Um, and wonder just, uh, I've watched that trailer so many times and I've, and I've, I was like dreaming about it last night. And it's just, I mean, we're, at, we're ending the Nintendo Switch. Or we're not ending, we're getting towards the end of the Nintendo Switch with, maybe the best Zelda and maybe the best Mario to Mario. It's like, whoa, that's, that's meaty. That's important. I, maybe next week we'll do like a really deep dive on, on switch to potential mm. like possibilities. I don't think there's any fucking chance in the hell. The next console is coming out next year mm. with it, with them releasing the best selling Zelda game and, what will probably not the best selling 2D Mario game. It won't be the best selling 2D Mario game because Mario yeah. Mario Wii fucking did like 30 million. Um, it, well, it the be best selling is actually Super Mario Bros because it was everyone had it for NES. Sure. I'm just telling you that's like factually. Well, true. and and I guess that also applies to Mario Bros Wii because it was a pack in for Wii a long for a mm -hmm. long time. Um, but this is a system seller. This yeah. people saying, oh, there's no big insiders saying or journalists saying no big games after Zelda. This is you cannot get bigger than this. Yeah, this is bigger than a 3D Mario. I'm sorry, yeah, people don't want to hear that, but in terms of sales numbers no, and is. mass appeal, it is easily bigger than a 3D Mario. So, yeah. I definitely don't it think it could feasibly be <laughs> the second highest selling game on the system. I don't think it'll pass Eight Deluxe because that game no <laughs> is just insane. Well, and, and it really comes down to how long the Switch does end up lasting. I'm still I'm yeah. still sticking with early 2025, but. It just depends on how much legs it has on the store shelf. If this game, mm -hmm. if, if Switch 2 is backwards compatible and they have this game on there and it's just available yeah, at Walmart yeah, for the next seven exactly. years, this game will sell 50 million copies. Yeah, this game will sell for a decade. <laughs> yeah, but it, but if Switch gets phased out and quickly and then Switch, this isn't on store shelves for only, if it's only out for like two or three years, then it probably won't reach that. Yeah. But um, this will this is, an, this is the most evergreen, evergreen Nintendo title. Um, yep. Yep. New Super Mario... New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe on Switch sold 15 million copies, Tucker. And they added just like massive. Nabbit and, B and fucking Bowsette to that game. They didn't add Bowsette. That's not real. They should have. Peachette. They had a Peachette. Yeah. They should have done. They should have done Bowsette. <laughs> this is so fucking exciting, man. Jesus. Yeah. God. Jesus. And any other writings about this? I just want to keep talking about this game forever. <laughs> just... I mean, I can point to a bunch of. I, I mentioned the animations. The animations are oh, sublime. When he goes in the pipe and he drops his hat and then grabs it and pulls yeah. it in and he peeks out. The little, like uh, this. the little jump they do where they like spread their arms when yeah, and all the characters yeah. do it. Um, kind of like uh, like Super Mario Bros. Three, where like he like putting out his belt. Yeah, sure. There's yeah. there's one shot where Mario and Peach are jumping and they like have gigantic yeah. hats, which is funny because Peach doesn't have a hat. <laughs> but too bad she has a hat. Yeah. So I wonder if Yoshi will have a hat. <laughs> um, and we didn't really talk about the, the gimmick of the the Wonder Seeds where you grab it. or Is it the Wonder Seed or is there Wonder Flower where you grab it? Wonder Flower is the power-up, the Wonder sure. Seed is the collectible. So the Wonder Flower, you grab it, and the level completely transforms into this drug-infested yeah. world of weird yeah. pipes squiggling around and Mario stretching up and down. That... It just goes to the whole creativity thing. That adds for they they can do literally whatever yeah. they want. <laughs> they yeah. can do anything that they want, and it, it will make sense in the context because you're getting into this knowing it's going to be a weird game. There's, yeah. Of course, the the new 
power-ups or at least animal fusions. Mario becomes a fucking elephant with the mm-hmm. possibly the grossest in-between frames I've ever seen yeah, for a, a video funny. game. Horrible. Horrifying. Um, <laughs> but that's super exciting. It's that, I feel like that's yeah. maybe an evolution of the capture mechanics from Odyssey. It just yeah, put into 2D, which is mm. cool. Um, I love that they're they're bringing in the mutant muds uh, foreground and, and background. Yes. So yeah, like, that's, like that's, 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 blocks, new, yeah. that's new for Mario. Yeah, it um, is. There's just so many new ideas here. The silhouette levels, the dark uh, levels. The, you, where, you hit like, the switch and, yeah, and their eyes are glowing. Yeah. yeah oh, the, the I, little talking flowers. That's cool. Yeah. Weird. They have voice acting. That's bizarre. That's new, There's yeah. like these toad guys that have like ice cream cone heads that are like not quite toads, but they're basically toads. And uh, uh, oh, there's one other thing that I've. Oh, Christ. It slipped my head. Uh, oh, it's just a weird game. It's just a fucking strange game. It's bizarre. I'm so excited, man. And the beauty is we only have to wait four months. <laughs> yeah. Which is like yeah. nothing. And, uh, you know, we'll get that September Direct. We'll get another trailer for it. We'll, and then we'll get ramp up with marketing. So I don't know if I really need to even see that much more, to be honest, because I think a lot of the appeal of this game will be seeing all the weird stuff for the first time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to. But there avo- will be more trailers. I'm, I'm not going to avoid it. But. Yeah. 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 So we'll be getting more. But, yeah, this game looks fantastic. Definitely the best announcement in the Direct for, I think, everybody. But um, yeah. that is that is it for the Nintendo Direct. Tucker, that was we talked about that for a long time, as expected. I, I really do think, especially after talking it through, this is the most in depth I've talked about this direct so far. Mm. Um, it was a fantastic direct. I would I would give it a nine yeah. out of ten through and through. Just that yeah. it's just that first ten minutes was weird, but sure, you're, sure. this is I want to say I would need to go back and check the most stacked direct in terms of first party announcements. Yes, I, S- it, just, and just in terms of raw number, is it six? I thought it was seven. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Well, we'll, 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 let's count it. Let's count it. A Detective Pikachu, Peach yeah, Game, yeah. Luigi's Mansion nope. Dark Moon, nope. Mario RPG, Mario RPG, so four. Um, yeah. Then you go into uh, Pikmin One and Two HD, so that's five. Oh, sure, I didn't count those because, but yes, I get. I get Getting a physical so, release sure. if we count Metroid yeah, no, Prime Remastered, right. yeah. Okay, yeah. then and then, and then, and then, and then yeah, WarioWare, and then yeah, yeah, and then Mario. Mario. So yeah, seven. I can't think of another direct that had that many. No, now, to, to be close. to be fair, <laughs> to Pikmin One and Two is a pretty bare bones port and dark moon is whatever yeah, yeah. um but as someone who comes to nintendo directs for that roadmap for just yep. the the appeal yep. of a new announcement this is so like stupid consumer brain i don't really like i don't care about seeing detective pikachu again that game mm. is out in my brain i know i'm gonna play it it's done i don't even really care to see super mario bros wonder again the yeah. announcement is the the art of it for me and, yeah, and yeah, just that, that is what directs are for me. This is why I hated the February direct because they only announced Metroid Prime Remastered yeah. with Shadow Drop. So it didn't give us any like hint of like what's next. This yep. direct gave us a full roadmap throughout the rest of the year mm-hmm. and into a little bit of next year. And for that, I, I would give it a 9 out of 10 personally. Yeah. We do have a lot of write-ins, but before we get to that, there was actually one other game I wanted to touch on, Tucker. I think oh, I yeah. showed this to you. Um, yeah. In the in the Japanese Nintendo Direct, there was a new 3D platformer game uh, revealed from Goodfeel, of course, the developers of Yoshi's Craft of the World and uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, called Otogi Katsugeki Mamada no Bakaru Oracle Saitaro no Sainen. I believe Wait, this is just... Name? That is the full name. A uh, lot of exclamation points in there as well. I believe this is a Goemon game, Mystical Ninja Goemon, like a new new game from this. Uh, Actually, being... in that series, I heard that I it was be... just like a spiritual successor. Maybe I'm not I'm not too positive, but Tucker, this game looks phenomenal. I I really hope this gets localized. It's weird that Nintendo's not publishing it. Maybe I, we've heard that Goodfield was going to do something on their own. I, I believe we actually and maybe Nintendo was they were doing this. not publishing it. Yeah, Nintendo was not publishing this game. Okay. I could maybe see them publishing it in the West or something, maybe help them get it localized, but it was not in our in our North America Direct. It was not in the Europe Direct. Coming out this year for Switch, this is a really cool-looking 3D ninja-themed platformer. It looks phenomenal. I really hope this comes over, because honestly, yeah. they, if, if this had been in the in the, in the the North American Direct, that would have made the Direct even better. I think this is this would have been one of the best-looking games in the Direct, <laughs> to be yeah, completely honest. I'm, I'm I, watching the trailer. I, I think this does all... I agree. I think it absolutely looks awesome, and I, I would really love for it to be picked up by Nintendo to be distributed. Um, what's interesting about this is the Switch has like what maybe two uh region exclusive games that have not been localized. Yeah, Funny uh, Mission Bond and yeah, a well, Brain Age never came out in America, but it came out in Europe. Yeah. yeah, but like this doesn't happen almost ever, which I think is actually maybe a bad sign for this game getting localized because neither of those well, it's games not, it's not Nintendo published though, so yeah. 
Maybe. But would it help? Or would it hurt? I don't because, care. Because I'm I scared. think it does indicate that most Nintendo published games do get localized, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. I would love for this to be localized. Well, it uh, seems like a I game that not. probably wouldn't require that much reading, so I could probably still just play this. Sure, sure. I sure. might I might just do that. And, and also, that's the thing, is Switch is reason free. I'm sure you have a Japanese account on your Switch, you fucking rat bastard. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll import the physical copy. I ain't afraid. Oh, 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 oh no. my bad. I'm sorry. I almost, I almost assumed that you would get a dislike. No, uh, but yeah, no, awesome, awesome yeah. announcement that we didn't know about. Yeah, it, maybe slight chance, maybe we see it in September direct. Um, but sucker, we do have a lot of write-ins just about the direct as a whole, so we're gonna get into all those now. Um, some are more deep than others. So, Alicia tried wrote in about Persona earlier, but they also wrote in about uh level five. They said, "Does the lack of level five game updates in the direct concern you with their progress?" Um, a little bit. I think yeah, it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a little weird. De- Deca Police and and um, Fantasy, Fantasy Life are supposed to come out this year, but yep. they weren't there. So when the fuck are those gonna come out? Yeah, they're supposed to come out this year. And I, Professor Lane, I'm not worried about that. But yeah, I would say I'm a little bit worried. Um, so so hopefully we get some sort. Of, maybe they had that level five vision in April. Maybe we'll get another one of those. Um, but yeah, I I'm a little worried. <laughs> At least yeah. for maybe we'll get one of those games this year. Not not both of them. For sure. Yeah, especially because those would have fit very nicely into the August or September slot, um, a little bit slower, uh, have a little room to breathe. But instead, no, uh, they're not, and we're not going to see it for a while. Um, I mean, I I'm not like jazzed about any of the games except for Professor Layton, but I certainly would be interested in uh, in learning more about them, and I and, and I I expected them, and so not seeing them is like, oh, it's happening here. Yeah, but. At, at, at the end of the day like there's so many games it's like sure fine take your time whatever yeah it's not that big a deal to me salvi wrote in and said as a mario fan the direct was amazing for me it seems some people are put off when nintendo doesn't cater to everyone's needs like another zelda another zelda and blade and metroid etc but that said what another are your thoughts... zelda <laughs> what are your thoughts on nintendo focusing on multiple mario franchises like mario rpg mario wonder peach and luigi's mansion all in one direct will there be room for more franchises that we have been waiting for like donkey kong this year or do you think this is it and everything else is next year so we're definitely not getting donkey kong this year that would have for sure been here um there's room for it next year you know um but i think it's fine we 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 get every direct has kind of a theme where it's like this is the direct where you get fire emblem and, and live alive and triangle strategy it's they're usually jrpg directs mm. it's what we were saying earlier this is our first mario direct <laughs> like a proper yeah. like scrimblow bimblow nintendo casual yeah. fan direct so i think it's fine to get one like this every once in a while and i'm sure that september direct will have fire emblem <laughs> you know it'll it'll have more stuff like that but yeah i think it's fine what about you uh, I don't care. I play. I play all the games anyway. So yeah. like, the balance doesn't really bother me. It's really about, as you were saying, the new announcements. And this did better than any other direct at that. Yeah. Uh, even if every game there didn't like super grab me, like I'm interested in Super Mario RPG, but I don't know if that's like a day one for me. Uh, Detective Pikachu has some asterisks. Of course, the two games in the middle, Luigi's Mansion and the Peach game, have major asterisks on them. Um, but Mario Wonder is really all that I needed. Uh, and then I got a new WarioWare that I wasn't expecting, and Detective Pikachu is real. And and Super Mario RPG, one of the most beloved games of all time, is getting a really high-quality remake. So it's like, okay, sure, it has a similar uh, sort of tone to it, because even though WarioWare is technically another franchise, it's also not because he's a Mario character. Uh, that's a little weird, but it ultimately does it matter at the end of the day? I don't really think so. Yeah. Okay. Silvercast wrote in, do you think Nintendo will do anything to revive, air quotes, Amiibo to what it once was with lots of new figures and incompatibility or just continue it in small chunks like they have been for the last few years? I hope they don't because as much as I like collecting Amiibo, I think they have been doing perfectly. I would like to see some more, you know, we're getting the Mio and Noah Amiibo from Xenoblade 3. That's weird, but I'm excited for that. We're getting these new Zelda Amiibo. If we get like five Amiibo a year, I think that's a win. And I just want them to keep doing it. Don't stop for the love of God. Please, please do not stop. Yeah, we'll get, we're getting something for Mario probably, right? Um, Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'd i say, like, maybe just the elephant Mario. Sure. Yeah, they'll re- what they've been doing recently is when a new game comes out, they reprint old ones because they have such a back catalog now. Like, when Fire Emblem Gage came out, they reprinted a bunch of random Fire Emblem sure, Amiibo. Sure. So we'll, we'll probably just keep seeing that, and I'm, I'm fine with that, personally. Yeah. And then, final question here. This one's kind of a doozy. 
Steven said, do you think Nintendo might possibly shadow drop a game between August to September? Might seem unlikely, but it is rather strange that they don't have much lined up for August and September, and seeing how they shadow drop the sequel to 1-2 Switch, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I mm. think there are two more games coming out this year we do not know about, Tucker. I think Ooh. I think we are going to get a GameCube game in the September Direct, and I think yeah. that is F-Zero. Yeah. That has been so heavily rumored. I think F-Zero... Oh, that's right. being being yeah. weird not not basing on a rumor i think maybe like Star Fox adventures just something weird get that mm-hmm. out and have a physical release in december um similar kind of time frame because they set up that expectation now that there will be a gamecube game so i think f-zero makes the most sense based on what we've been hearing about ru- from rumors um mm. and then i think epd4 the the horse game team the the rank fit adventure team will also have a game announced and released in that time frame um a, a maybe a rank fit adventure 2 maybe um something like that just some weird game they yeah. it, it is kind of weird that they put everybody one two switch where they did. That team kind of just shows up when it wants to. They've they have at least one game a year. Sometimes they've done two though. So I wouldn't be surprised to see like a Rankfit Adventure in September. I think that totally could be. And it is an interesting ten week gap. I I I saw some YouTubers and I was actually argu- not arguing with, but we were kind of talking about um I was talking with one YouTuber about how this 10 week gap between Pikmin four and, and detective Pikachu suggest they don't have anything and how they're saving it for the switch. My, my brother in Christ, they're releasing four first party games in eight weeks in October, yeah, and November. Yeah. This and they released the problem like, of they didn't balance their schedule properly. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they released like 12 games in the first six months. Yeah. It is weird that there's a 10 week gap. And I do think there is something there. Uh, Splatoon three side order will also probably release in that time frame, I'd imagine. Yeah. But yeah, I think at the very least you can expect prop. They have set the expectation for another GameCube game, I think. So, yeah, that, that that's interesting. I wouldn't put as much stock in that. I think it might just be a weird coincidence because two is indicating a pattern, but I think three would really seal it. Um, and if we don't see it there, I think that that break, it'll, it'll break that pattern, then we won't really think about it again. Um, but I also think that people have to remember there is the possibility of a smaller downloadable only title dropping. Free to play Kirby. Al, Al has done that twice. They've done it twice this generation. Uh, and so whether it's something that they're publishing, like they did with Stretchers and Good Job, or, or it's something like Dream Buffet last year, that was announced outside of the context of a direct with just been the trailer and just released a couple weeks later. And that was exactly in the same time frame we're talking about. Announced in July and released in August. Mm-hmm. So that that is, some, that is a distinct possibility. And of course, it's not like major, but it does fill in that gap. Uh, and and I, I think that'll be probably what happens i think you you could be right uh bring fit might be exactly that um that'd be interesting that'd be really strange um but yeah i i, I think we still have another game or two coming yeah, yeah. I, I at least one at least one maybe maybe two a little 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 too much but for sure something and, and to be fair pikmin uh one and two physical is in september so maybe they're like like counting that as like a i doubt it but to be fair there is <laughs> This might be, there's nothing in August, but this would, this is the closest to having a physical game every month that the Switch has had any year, which sure. is interesting. But you're right. I think a, a free-to-play PAL game seems possible. I am not even saying this is a joke. We are probably due for a Kirby game to be announced, <laughs> even though we just got Return of Dreamland Deluxe and Dream Buffet and yeah. Forgotten Land. I would not be surprised if they tease another one in September. Mm. Maybe it wouldn't come out until next year, but <laughs> I would not, I would not be shocked. But, but we're um, going to... We're gonna shit our pants when the next 3D Kirby is announced. Yeah, I'm dude, I'm I'm ready. Forgotten Land 2, just put a two on it. Honestly. Sure. sure. That, that game's fantastic. So that is gonna do it for this uh this episode of the Nintendo Select Podcast, though, people. Thank you so much for writing in, everybody that did so, and for watching, of course. Um, this was a lot of fun. I yeah. this is our first time getting real news since we started the podcast, um, which is is exciting. And I think that we it was a fir- it was a good first direct to have to cover. Because Absolutely. there's a lot of exciting stuff. And now we, like you said, we have these months of just exciting things to talk about and review mm-hmm. and, and discuss on the podcast. So as a, a new Nintendo podcast, this was perfect. And uh, I'm really excited for the future of Nintendo. And even though I don't believe in a Switch 2, I do think it's fun to discuss. Um, so yeah. maybe next yeah. week we'll do a more like catered discussion around that. Um, and we didn't even really talk about Prime 4 here, which we will discuss also next week. Because sure. what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> um, Tucker, do you have any closing thoughts here before we wrap up? Uh, I I don't have almost any food in my house right now because our microwave is broken, and so like most of the food that we buy needs to be microwave, whether that's you know frozen or fucking eating a can of soup or whatever. Um, so I need to go get some food. Uh, but what what fast food restaurant should I go to? <laughs> we gotta keep the streak, buddy. <laughs> hmm. 
Not sure. You have a, you got like a. <laughs> it's not really a fast food. You got like a Cracker Barrel. Go to a Cracker Barrel, Tucker. Jesus Christ, but I don't think I've been to a Cracker Barrel since I was like eleven. Me neither. There there aren't any on the on where I live, so I don't even know if there are any here. I've I've never even thought about going to a Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm not going to a fucking Cracker Barrel because also I need to. I'm going by myself. Can you imagine how lame a person would have to be to go to a fucking Cracker Barrel and just sit there by themselves? Old people do that. I think. Right, that's My like a, that's, exactly. that's like an old people thing, right? Cracker Barrel, I think. Yeah, like the the vibes. There's one three miles barrel. away. I'm not going three miles to go to fucking Cracker Barrel. You could. Um, but yeah, of course. Once again, uh, join the Discord, rate us, follow Spotify, Apple Podcasts, of course, here on YouTube as well. Um, I'm going to be covering this Nintendo Direct in detail for weeks to come. In mm -hmm. depth on every game, I'll do a video on pretty much every first party game announced because I think there's a lot to talk about here and dissect as time goes on as we get more information. And then, yeah, Pikmin 4 coming out. So a lot to look forward to for Nintendo fans and in terms of coverage. But uh, until next time, folks, bye-bye. Bye-bye.